Before we begin, I'd like to make some clarification and also to apologize to some of our resource persons and uh, media present here today. We, sh we initially planned to start at 9 a.m., but because of the holiday last week, we weren't able to give the information early enough. So there was a bit of miscommunication, but now we are at, uh, starting exactly now at 10 a.m. May we ask the remaining resource persons to present here today to please take their seats. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. The Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs, the Committee on Peace, Unification, and Reconciliation, and the Committee on Finance is resumed. In the resumption of our hearing on the Mama Sapano incident, I would like to request my colleagues to focus on matters that had not been discussed or questions that have not been asked or sufficiently answered. I also would like to make some clarification on important matters that could provide the framework for today's hearing. Number one, for the AFP, were the grid coordinates given by Director Napenas in the morning of January 25th on the position of the 55th Special Action Company, upon which information from Senior Superintendent Talino went personally to the mechanized brigade to ask for support and reinforcement sufficient to give the AFP guidance to fire artillery? What is the difference in the situation between the information on the position of the 55th in the morning of January 25th and the position of the 84th in the afternoon around 5 p.m. when the AFP was able to drop white phosphorus which reportedly drove away their pursuers? Number two, the SAF in the early morning of January 25th was also requesting for air support. Did the AFP have MG-520 attack helicopters in West Mincom on, the day, on that day at its disposal that could have been scrambled for the purpose? Or was it even feasible to deploy the MG-520s under the situation then prevailing as far as the 55th SAC is concerned? Number three, I understand that the American Armed Forces, like the Joint Operation Task Force Philippine based in Zamboanga, could help in training and intel swap with their own military under the framework of the Visiting Forces Agreement. But what I want to ask the Department of Foreign Affairs, the DILG and the VFA COM is under what legal framework or arrangement could the American military train and engage the civilian Philippine National Police? How about the FBI? I heard about the Anti-Terrorism Assistance Program, ATAP, that is supposedly the basis for the American government for their part to engage with the PNP on the counter-terrorism. Can the DFA, DILG, or the Anti-Terrorism Council enlighten the committee if there was really such a program officially acceded to by the Philippine government? Number four, the OPAP and the peace panel with all the submissions by experts before the committee before the committees on the BBL that there are serious constitutional challenges facing several provisions of the same this is on top of the adverse public reaction brought about by the Mama Sapano incident where do we go from here how do we plan to make the whole process and the final product which is the BBL most probably amended accordingly acceptable to the public and the MILF that would still attain the genuine peace that it aspires for. This could be discussed in subsequent hearings by the Committee of Senator Bongbong Marcos 
or per perhaps the Committee on Constitutional Amendments. Number five, in the report submitted by General Galvez of the CCCH to General Katapang, it contains an observation on the positions of the remains of seven SAF members belonging to the 55th Special Action Company during the retrieval operations, which may indicate that they were not killed in action but could have been tortured to death. Can you explain this observation, General Galvez? Is it also true that the artillery support was ready at 6 a.m., but the military was requested by Brigadier General Galvez of OPAP to wait and give way for the ceasefire mechanism to take place? Number six. From our last public hearing, I asked General Purisima if he informed the President and gave him updates on the 25th. We will now ask him to read his text messages with the President on the 25th and share relevant information leading to the 25th. Finally, with the threats raised by many sectors from either side of the fence that the passage or as well as the non-passage of the BBL would result to renewed war, true or not, I would like to ask our security sector if we are ready to address whatever eventualities that may ensue because I believe that the AFP and the PNP should rise above this Mama Sapano incident and anchor on previous coordinated successes to enable us to work together to secure the nation in case of any threats. Before we start, I also gather from news that the Board of Inquiry is scheduled to come out with a report by next week. May we request then direct, uh, our Director uh, Magalong to please furnish this committee with the same to form part of the record. I also received a request uh, from the AFP if they can do a short presentation, a short one, I may stress, before our questions, and uh, we will allow that. But you also sent a request for an executive session. We will decide on that at the end of this hearing. In the meantime, I would like to, the rules still remain the same. Each senator will again be given five minutes each for questions. If this time is not sufficient, we will have a second round and they may avail another five minutes for questioning. We shall use the order of arrival as basis for the sequence of committee members to ask their questions. Now, with the questions I posted, we don't have to answer this all immediately. This is something that we should bear in mind during this hearing. But for today, um, I would like to request, this is the order of arrival. We have uh, Senator Escudero, Trillanes, Angara, Gingona, Soto, Honasan, and Ejercito. So now we shall begin with our questioning. Um, uh, before our questions, we shall now begin with the presentation of the AFP. Madam Chair, prior to that, may I suggest that um, after the presentation of the AFP, can we um, have the response, respective responses of General Purisima as well as um, General Galvez on the two points that the Chair raised a while ago? After the AFP, Madam Chair. Yes, Senator Escudero, we will, we will do that. And any more questions before we begin with the presentation? Uh, Madam Just, Chair. Uh, uh, I Madam believe Chair. we have new resource persons, so may, they may take their uh, oath. Thank you. May we request uh, the, com the, the secretary to please administer the oath? I think we have two additional resource persons, uh, Yusek Evan Garcia from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Yusek Eduardo Oban from the Visiting Forces Agreement Commission. And for those of you who have not also taken your oath, Senator Soto, you have a question? Uh, just a little housekeeping, but I will uh, tell you privately, Madam Chair. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this investigation in aid of legislation on the Mamasapano incident? For the record, Madam Chair, the resource persons gave an affirmative answer. May we request the senators that arrived to please move uh, closer to the center of our um, table. Sen Senator Angara, uh, Soto, Gingona, Villar and Trillanes, and Senator JV. 
I think it's better if we move closer so that Who will be doing the presentation for the AFP? Madam Chair, I'll be the one to... General Katapang. Uh, yes, go, Madam Chair. Go ahead, please. Your Honors, Madam Chair, nais po naming humingi ng pagkakataon upang liwanagi ng mga isyu tungkol sa inyong armed forces kaugnay sa mga naging aksyon ng AFP units noong 25 January 2015 sa Masasapano mamasa paano ang Maguindanao kung saan 44 na PNP sub commandos ang nag-alay ng kanilang buhay at gayon din ang 28 sub commandos na nailigtas ng ating Philippine Army Troopers ang mga investigasyon kaugnay sa sa insidente your honors ay tinututukan ng ating mga kasundaluhan lalo na po na may napapabalita na nagkaroon po ng pagkukulang sa aming hanay, gayon namang hindi po kami kasama sa pagpaplano at pagpapatupad ng operasyong ito. Labis pong naapektuhan ang moral ng ating mga kasundaluhan. Sa katunayan po sa pag-iikot ko sa mga units nung isang linggo, ito po ang kanilang nasasabi o ang aking naririnig. Bakit po tayo ang nasisisi? Di po ba tinulungan naman natin sila sa gipin? Ano po bang ginawang aksyon ng mga kasama nilang SAP na more than 300 na hindi naman napasabak sa labanan? Your Honors, kasama po natin ngayong umaga lahat ang mga ground commanders simula sa platoon leader, company commander, battalion commander, brigade commanders na naging bahagi sa rescue ng SAP 28 upang mapagbigyan ng direktang kasagutan sa inyong mga tanong kung ano ba talaga ang nangyari nung araw na iyon. Bilang Chief of Staff ng inyong Armed Forces and with the kind indulgence of the members of the Honorable Committees, katungkulang ko pong bigyan ng linaw ang mga mahalagang bagay neto upang maliwanagan ang pangyayari sa Mama Sapano. Ito po ang aking ipapahayag. Unang-una, tungkol po sa chain of command, pangalawa, levels of war, and then, of course, ang aking concluding statement. Sa tinatawag po nating chain of command sa armed forces, ay, ito po ay magkakasunod-sunod na level of commands na nagmumula sa pinakamataas naming pinuno hanggang sa pinakamababa kung saan ay nagbibigay ng kapangyarihan na mamuno at magbigay ng utos. Ito po ay tinatawag ng command channel. Ang ating pong presidente, being commander-in-chief, ay gumaganap ng kanyang otoridad at control sa ating armed forces sa pamamagitan ng chain of command. Ang ating pong Secretary of National Defense naman ang siyang ng pangunahing umaalalay sa ating pangulo at commander-in-chief sa lahat ng bagay kaugnay sa national defense. Ang ating pong chain of command ay nagmumula sa ating presidente patungo sa chief of staff sa pamamagitan ng kanya mga unified commanders gaya ng NOLCOM, SOLCOM, WESTCOM, SENCOM, WESTMINCOM, ISMINCOM at kasama ang mga commanders ng major services na kasama ang Philippine Army, Philippine Navy at Philippine Air Force. Ano ba ang command base na doktrina sa inyong armed forces? Ito po ay ibinibigay na legal na kapangyarihan sa isang commander ng isang unit ng armed forces upang pangunahan ng kanyang subordinates by virtue of his rank and assignment. Ang kapangyarihan ito ay 
may kaakibat na responsibilidad to effectively organize, direct, co coordinate, control the forces na kanyang nasasakupan upang isakotuparan ang binigyan na misyon. Doctrinal, po, doctrinal levels of war. Ito po ay sumusunod. Grand strategic, strategic, operational, at tactical. Akin pong ipaliliwanag ito sa mga susunod na slides. Ang strategic level of war is the place where the most basic but the most consequential decisions are made. Dito po tinutukoy ang, ng isang bansa kung ito ay papasok sa isang digmaan, sino-sino ang kanyang kaalyado at kalaban, at ano-anong parameters ng paggamit ng kapayapaan pagkatapos ng isang labanan. The strategic level of war, ito po, war, ito po ay kaugnay sa pagkalahatang pangasiwa ng digmaan. Kung ilan ang mga kailangang persa, pagtimbang ng mga aksyong nararapat gawin in every chapter of war. Sa pagkakataon pong ito, patungkol po sa operation against Marwan and Usman, ito po ay nag nagbigay ng ating pangulo ng isang strategic guidance na pagtulungan ng AFP at PNP ang pagsugpo sa terorismo. Kaakibat sa guidance na ito ang paghuli sa teroristang Marwan at Usman at mahigpit rin pong inutos ng ating mahal na pangulo ang magandang at matinding koordinasyon sa pagitan ng AFP at PNP. At bilang Chief of Staff ng ating Armed Forces, ako po ay nagbigay ng command guidance sa ating area commander noong December 18 na makipag-usap kay Director na Peñas upang pagtulungan ang pagsasagawa ng isang joint operations para hulihin si Marwan at Usman. Sa ibaba po na strategic level ay ang operational level. Sa level po na ito ay pinag-usapan kung paano ang paggamit ng strategic ends sa pamamagitan ng paggamit ng mga persang itinalaga. Sa level po ito ay ginagawa ang plano kung saan gagamitin ng land, air, and sea forces sa buuang kumpanya, kampanya. Si Lieutenant General Rustico Guerrero, commander ng Western Mindanao Command, ang siyang namumuno dito tungkol sa mamasapano incident. Sa pinakahuling antas ng digmaan ay ang tinatawag nating tactical level dito po nangyayari ang aktual na labanan ng mga nagkakadugaling pwersa gaya ng nangyari sa Mama Sapano. Sa panahong ito, dapat po ay klaro ang mga objectives at mga taong responsable sa pagpaplano at pagsasagawa ng tactical na manubra at sinasabihan ang mga nakakataas kung ano ang, ang mga specific na actions na gagawin. Si Major Ed Pangilinan, Division Commander ng 6th Infantry Kampilan Division, ang Tactical Commander sa Mama Sapano Incident. Para po mas makita ang relasyon ng mga levels at antas ng ating nab nabanggit, ang Presidente po bilang Commander-in-Chief ay nagbibigay ng strategic guidance kung paano paghahandaan ang pagsupo sa mga bantang sig siguridad sa ating bansa gaya ng national policy ng pagkakaroon ng just and lasting peace sa Mindanao. Ang Chief of Staff naman po ang nagdi-decide ng strategic concept na itinatawag naming operational art para magsilbing giyan ng mga unified commanders kung paano gagamitin ang pangkahalatang objective based of strategic guidance ng ating commander-in-chief or based sa strategic guidance ng ating commander-in-chief. Kasama po dito ang kaukulang pwersa na dapat ihanda. Isang klasikong halimbawa po dito yung aming internal peace and order campaign plan bayanihan. Habang ang mga unified commanders naman po, gaya ng West Mincom, na kanilang operational level ay siyang nangangasiwa ng pag-allocate ng land, sea, and air forces. Ang ating division commanders naman po ng Army at ang katumbas nito sa Navy at Air Force, ang siyang nag nagtatalaga ng units na nasa ilalim nilang kontrol na mag magkasasaayos ng mga tropa base sa banta ng siguridad. Ito po ang doktrina naming sinusunod sa Armed Forces. Doktrina nagmula po sa mga dekadang taong karanasan ng inyong sandatang lakas sa larangan ng digmaan. Sa levels of planning coordination naman po, ang chart na ito ay naglararawan kung papaano isasagawa ang koordinasyon para maayos ang operasyon. Makikita natin ang mga linya ay magkakaruktong sa iba't ibang kapangyarihan at uh, 
ang parehong ahensya. Nagbibigay ito ng tamang situational awareness at common operational pictures upang magbigay daan sa maayos na koordinasyon at mabilis na pagtugon sa anumang pangyayari magaganap. Sa malungkot na pangyayari ng 25 January, ang horizontal lines na kumakatawan sa koordinasyon ay wala. Sa mga isyu na inihag ni Director Napeñas, Police Superintendent Talino, Police Superintendent Tra Train at mga iba pang miyembro nila, ako po ay humihiling sa kagalagalang na miyembro ng committee para sa isang executive session upang marinig ang mga pahayag ng mga ground commanders ng AFP na siyang direktang umaksyon at tumulong sa miyembro ng PNP SAP. Ito po ay mahalaga para malayan sila makapagsalita sa kadahilanan ang kanilang mga ipapahayag ay maaaring may implikasyon sa capabilities, strength at kahinaan ng ating armed forces. Sa ngalan ng bumubuo ng sandatang lakas ng Pilipinas, ako po ay taos-pusong nakikiisa sa panawagan na bigyan natin ng kaukulang pagkilala ang mga bayaning miyembro ng SAP 44. Gayon din po, aming posisyon ay magbigyan ng, mabigyan ng kaukulang pagkilala ang 28 miyembro ng SAP na kasami, kasapi ng 84th SAC na, kalig, na nakaligtas. Sumasaludo rin po ako sa kagitingan at kabayanihan ng mga sundalo ng AFP na nagtyaga sa kanilang nagtaya sa kanilang buhay para ma-rescue at ma-extricate ang mga napalabang miyembro ng SAP. Isinusulong ko rin po na magkaroon ng isang independent higher body ang AFP at PNP na magsasagawa upang suriin at masusing maimbestigahan para magkaroon ng kalinuwanagan ng mga isyu tungkol sa nangyaring operational gaps, koordinasyon, respons responsibilidad, pananagutan at iba pang bagay kaugnay sa pang pangyayari ng Mama Sapano. Again, maraming salamat po sa pagkakataong ito at nakapagsalita po ang inyong kasundaluhan. Salamat po. Maraming salamat, General Katapang, sa pag-explika nito. Pero ito'y parang, um, ito'y mga hierarchy, ano, ang gusto natin malaman din, yung response ninyo pag emergency situation. Yun po ay ating uh, pagdidiskusyon na ngayon araw. Ngayon po, hihilingin ko po ang sagot ni General Galvez tungkol po dun sa tanong ko bago po tayo pumunta kay General Purisima. Totoo po ba na nalaman na nalaman na ng military at sila po ay handa na tumulong maaga pa lamang, subalit hiniling po ninyo na bigyan muna ng pagkakataon yung mekanismo ng peace process bago sila sumugod. Uh, Ma'am, your honors, uh, uh, to take the record straight, uh, based on the, the uh, coordination matrix uh, made by uh, Police Director Napenas, I'm uh, one of the top four uh, to be coordinated. But uh, in a, in a, to, to make the record, the record straight, ma'am, uh, I was not been called by uh, Police Director Napeña until the, the fateful day of uh, that day and until 4, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So I was only informed 6.38 by my counterpart. Where I was then in Iligan. You were informed what time? 6.38 po. In the evening? Uh, morning po. Ng, uh, in the morning. And when you found out, sir, what were your instructions? Ang instruction ko po, uh, directed most on sa MILF side po. Na nagkaroon po kami ng ano, tinawagan po namin yung, yung, uh, yung uh, uh, field commanders. Binerify po namin kung totoo talaga na may enkwentro. Kasi ang report po sa amin, madam, uh, ang, uh, ang, ano po, ang encounter is between 105th Brigade at saka 105 uh, base command and a, the armed forces of the Philippines. So ngayon po tumawag po ako sa tumawag po kami sa mga field units uh, sa aking classmate at tinanong ko kung mayroon silang enkwentro, ang sabi po nila wala po. So yung first ano first uh, hours po namin ng uh, pagano po isa uh, to organize yung joint sa uh, crisis committee but we never no we never we never ano po uh, kasi ang na, hindi po kami nagko-communicate pa ng ng mga tactical commanders because uh, ang policy po namin normally hindi kami nakipag-communicate sa tactical alam namin busy po sila sila, sila, sila ma'am uh, during those times so ang inano po namin is more on sa ano sa MILF at saka sa sa panel sa protocol so kayo po ay na napagbigay napagbigyan ng alaman uh, um, 
nasabihan ni Gerald Napenas noong umaga pa lamang. Wala po, ma'am. Uh, uh, Paano to, niyo nalaman ulit? Uh, wala pong tawag po sa akin si Gerald Napenas. Do sinabi niya na pang-up na number 4 ako po sa, ano, sa, sa kanyang tatawagan, time on target, but uh, to make the record straight, he never called me up until uh, nakita ko po siya sa 4 o'clock sa Saripagwa. So, sinong tumawag sa iyo at nagbigay sa inyo? Ng... Si Chairman Rashid uh, Ladyasan po ang aking counterpart. Siya nagsabi sa inyo na nagkakaroon ng sagupaan doon. Mainit na po sa... ka na po. Pagkatapos po noon, natawagan ba ninyo si General Katapang, si General Pangilinan o kung sino man sa kanila? Ma'am, ma ang, uh, ang ano po sa amin, ang protocol is to verify whether the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the encounter is really real or not. So, nung time na po yun, ang ano po namin, uh, doon po kami tumawag po sa line units kung merong enkwentro na nangyayari. And uh, we have validated na meron pong enkwentro na nangyayari between the SAF at saka po yung ano, yung uh, uh, yung uh, uh, MILF. Sino po nakausap ninyo sa unit na yon na nag-verify sa inyo? Ang uh, natatandaan ko po, uh, tumawag po ako sa classmate ko po kay Colonel Feliciano po. Colonel Feliciano, ngayon po, kailan ninyo, kailan kayo unang nag-usap nung uh, General Katapang o kaya General Pangilinan o kaya uh, General Guerrero, sino, kailan po kayong nag-usap? Ang ma'am, ang ano po, tumawag po sa akin si Gen General Pangilinan, mga 9 o'clock na po. Kasi ang, ano po, nasa, nasa iligan po ako that time, ma'am. 9 ng umaga? Yes, ma'am. Tapos, ano yung napag-usapan ninyo? Ang uh, ano po niya is mag-report ka agad po ako dun sa ano sa sa headquarters po sa TCP. <laughs> Pero wala kayong sinasabi na wag muna kayong lumusob. Wala, wala po taka wala po ma'am, wala po ma'am. Chair Pangilinan, ano pong napag-usapan ninyo? Ang napag-usapan po namin ay tinawagan ko siya at inalam kung alam na nila yung nangyayaring insidente at I requested his presence dahil binuo ko po agad noon ng aking battle staff to monitor what was really going on. Ni-request ko po siya na makaabot sa aking headquarters para map mapag-usapan kung ano yung nangyayari. Hindi lang naman po siya ang tinawagan ko. Tinawagan ko rin po ang uh, adjac, adjac chair, si General Lorenze, at inalam ko rin po kung alam niya yung uh, insidente yung nangyayari. At uh, doon po, uh, nakarating po sila sa akin is uh, past 12 na nga po eh. Dahil accordingly, uh, General Galvez came from uh, Iligan or in uh, Lanao. Alam niyo sir, napakahirap ng sitwasyon din ninyo. Eh. Nag-check kayo dito sa uh, peace panel natin kung anong nangyayari, nagpapa-update kayo. Pero binibigyan din kayo ng instruction na kailangan na ng suporta ng military. So, paano po yun? How are you able to juggle that? Prioritize po ba ninyo yung mekanismo ng peace process? Or ano pong ginawa ninyong contingency para matulungan yung ating mga pulis? Ah, sa pagkaliwanagan po, uh, Madam Chair and um, uh, Your Honors, Mula nang malaman po namin yung insidente, immediately po kami ay nag-provide ng reinforcement. Sa katotohanan po, as early as 09 to 0920, nandun na po ang ating reinforcing element. Nakapag-ugnayan na po sila sa most forward element po ng SAF. Yun po yung tinatawag nilang uh, tactical command post na nandoon sa uh, barangay... Tuka, tuka, do, doon po, as early po as 9.20, nandun na po ang ating puwersa. Kasama po ang, uh, may kasama po sila doong uh, anim na armored vehicle o anim na tangke at may kasama na rin pong sundalo na sila po yung tumulong immediately. Kaya po wala pong katotohanan na kami ay hindi nag-provide ng reinforcement. Hindi kaya nga po eh, alam nga natin na nandun kayo ng maaga at sabi nga ninyo tumulong. Pakidetalyo po, anong tulong ang binigay ninyo um, sa kanila para mas maliwanagan din ang ating mga kababayan? Pagdating po ng ating puwersa doon sa ground, sila po ay nagkaroon ng uh, pakikipagtalastasan doon sa mga SAF na nandoon sa highway at mga pinuno na nandoon. So, ang ginawa po ng ating uh, 62nd Recon uh, Company na ito po ay uh, tinatawag po nating foot soldier o infantry, immediately po sila ay pumasok at nag-try o nag-attempt na itumulong o mag-reinforce doon sa napapainkwentrong grupo. During that time, hindi po namin alam kung ano yung napapainkwentrong grupo. Ang alam lang po namin 
ito po ay SAP. Pero hindi po namin alam kung anong company, kung anong unit sila po uh, napapabilang. Hindi rin po namin alam kung ilan ang SAP na nasa loob. Hindi rin po namin alam na meron pa palang isang grupo na as per uh, presented ng ating pong BOI, yung pong 84th SAC na naingkwentro na pala as early as 4 in the morning. Wala po kaming informasyon na ganun. Pero nang malaman po natin ang information nung bandang 6 at nagdidevelop po ang situation, base doon sa dahan-dahang informasyon na pumapasok sa atin, yun po ay nakabuo na tayo ng ating kasundaluhan, kasama po ang ating mga tangke, na nagpunta doon sa encounter area para po tumulong na mag-reinforce doon po sa ating sap. Hindi po kaya pumasok ng tangke doon dahil sa topography o sa landscape o ano ba? Hindi po na kayang pumasok ng tangke sa kaloob-looban dahil po ito po ay swampy area. Malambot po at lulubog po ang ating mga tangke. Kaya po ang ating tangke ay nanatili lamang doon po sa highway dahil po matigas yung lupa doon at yun lang ang kakayahan ng ating tangke na Ma'am, can I request na maano po kasi I am now revealing some of the information that may... Okay po, we, we, we will go ahead and respect that for a possible executive session. Um, in the meantime, um, Senator Escudero, do you have additional... Um, General, go ahead, Galvez. Uh, Ma'am, Ma Ma Madam Chair, I would like to convey uh, my, ano, my, uh, my point that uh, during the coordination, our, our main purpose is uh, for the imposition of the protocol. We don't have any... Ano, any, ano, any uh, any knowledge on the tactical <coughs> missions that they, they are, they are, they are uh, undergoing because uh, ang ano po namin ma'am ang uh, normally ang ceasefire ang concentration namin is uh, how to compose yung ano yung joint ceasefire uh, crisis team at the same time to ano to to ano to, to talk with the counterpart so yung mga decision ng tactical commanders we have no influence uh, kung kung tutuusin sir na, na ano talaga ma'am kasi ang ano namin more, more on sa ceasefire on how we will ano ceasefire. sir um, i think you that's that's a point you're making clear. You did not order them because you don't have the authority to order them not to engage. On the other hand, um, is it possible that you may have advised them to wait? Believe yung uh, yung nalabas po sa Philippine Star na uh, advised them to wait. I think it's already more or less two o'clock na po yon ng hapon. So you told them to wait at 2 p.m. Uh, actually, nung ano po nyo, nung ano mo po mo mayon, nakakarong po kami ng ano, ng uh, ng uh, ng ano, kasi nado na po sa loob mam yung ano eh, yung amin nga uh, si Spira no, si Spira uh, joint si Spira team. Hindi hindi po namin malamang bakas sila po ang matamaan. Kaya kino kontak po namin sila kung saan nung location nila at saka saan nung location ng ano ng mga mga joint si Spira may me mechanical teams. Kaya po yun po ang uh, main reasons na kung pwede ano mo na dal kasi mas mahirap baka mam yan nado na sila sa loob. Doon po pa pumaputukan ng kanyon yung ano yung ating mga joint ceasefire teams na nandoon na sa loob po ma'am. Okay. I would also like to remind um, our military personnel here that if there are questions which you feel will compromise your strategy just remind us immediately so that we won't go on because our orientation is to ask. And 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 it might be difficult for us to be able to decipher at a certain point if this is something very sensitive uh, for your operational um, tactics. I would now like to ask uh, General Purisima if you have any statements and if you can perhaps read certain um, information that you might have regarding your informing the President of the operation on the day itself, the 25th or days leading to that. Madam Chair, uh, Your Honors, good morning. I'm sorry, uh, General Purisima, if you would use Sek Musingi as a question. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, good morning. Honorable members of the committees, good morning. My name is Mike Musing. I represent the Office of the President. Um, I understand that what will be revealed today includes and covers communications between the President and his uh, subordinate, uh, being an officer still of the Philippine National Police. In the interest of transparency, we will allow this but uh, commonly these are covered by presidential privilege on communications but uh, uh, again i just like to manifest that uh, in the interest of uh, information sharing and transparency we will allow and we appreciate that uh Yusak Musi. on the other hand for presidential privilege does that extend to those outside of the cabinet of the president yes. uh, my understanding is that uh, jurisprudence includes conversations and communications of outside cabinet members if it's in close proximity 
uh, under the proximity rules of as covered by jurisprudence that will uh, allow them to uh, information very sensitive and delicate uh, since it is with the information and uh, communications of the His Excellency the President. Thank you, sir. In fact, we, we did have the opportunity to read through that. Um, I think that it will, if ever, enlighten us better. And we thank you also for understanding the relevance of this conversation. I don't think uh, it will compromise any national security matters at this point, which is our primary concern also in requesting for the information to be read first in executive session. So we can go ahead now, General Purisima. Madam Chair, Your Honors, good morning. The uh, SMS uh, exchange between uh, His Excellency President Benigno Aquino III and myself was done on uh, January 25, uh, Sunday, while I was in uh, San Leonardo, Nueva Ecija. The first uh, text message sent to, the, to, the, to His Excellency was sent at uh, January 25, 5.45 a.m., Sunday. And the uh, body of the text is uh, like this. Sir, good morning. For info, SAF elements implemented OPLAN against high value targets. As of now, results indicate that Marwan was killed and one SAF trooper wounded. The body of Marwan was left behind, but pictures were taken. The troopers are now withdrawal phase and progress report to follow. End of the message. At uh, 7.36, uh, His Excellency, Excellency replied, Why was it left behind? The other two targets. My reply was, Sir, accordingly, when the nearest target from the line of approach is M1, and when they hit the primary target, they had the other house where Basit Osman was located with other elements reacted and fired at the troopers. <coughs> There were about 15 to 20 armed elements. It was about 4.30 a.m. and it was decided that they pu pull out after gathering pictures and other evidences. They were not able to reach the secondary target, sir. The reply of uh, the President, if I remember correctly... Uh, excuse me, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, can, can we ask uh, General Purisima to include the time of the the uh, text messages, uh, sir? Your Honor, when, uh, when I uh, transcribed this uh, message on my iPhone, it did not uh, indicate the time, but I uh, will try to uh, indicate the time for submission to the Senate, Your Honor. So perhaps it's within the, within the two minutes right after you sent the message. That's why it didn't record the time. So 7.36 a.m., the President replied to you right after that, Let's assume 7.38, you answered him immediately, and then right after maybe 7.38, another, within the two minutes, he answered you. Am I correct? This was more within less, uh, a few honor, minutes? Yes, uh, you're okay. okay. So let's assume it's within 7.36 uh, to a few minutes after that. So the president replies, if I remember... If I remember correctly... 160 SAF troopers were directly involved in this operation, plus provisions for other PNP and AFP units to assist. The terrain is flat and clear as opposed to upland forested or jungle terrain. Why could they not contain and or overwhelm the 15 to 20 member opposing force? Are they still in contact with the other two targets, two other targets? If not, and the opposing force has escaped. Are we made? Are we, are we now back to square one? My reply, Your Honor. They are presently in contact with the reinforcing elements from BIFF. The containment forces are the ones in contact, contact right now. They are supported by mechanized and artillery artillery support, sir. Can you repeat that, sir? The con I will repeat this. The containment forces are the ones in contact right now. They are supported by mechanized and, and artillery, artillery support, support, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. That uh, message, Your Honor, was uh, taken from the SMS of uh, Police uh, of uh, Lieutenant General uh, Guerrero when uh, we we asked we were asking for support from uh, the Armed Forces of the Philippines. 
So next, so you reported that there was support. Next, you 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 answer the local target. Uh, this is just a continuation, Your Honor. The local target basket and this group were the first group that were that were engaged by the main effort group. And uh, his reply, uh, His Excellency's reply, review your earlier and latest text. They differ as to which was engaged first. My uh, reply, Your Honor, I mean, sir, the first target was M1, where they were able to neutralize first. The group of Basit retaliated, which was 100 meters away. At 10.16 a.m., His Excellency replied, Basit should not get away. At 11.38, uh, Your Honor, I uh, sent a text message again, already advised, sir, but as of the moment, the main effort is withdrawing, and according to Director IG, we still have our contact with the, and will hit them again, sir. Did you mean contact with the, contact with who? Our contact with the, uh, our asset, Your Honor, the, uh, the, uh, the asset of IG, still uh, maybe in contact with the, the group, Your Honor. That's what I meant, Your Honor. Okay. And then at 6.20 p.m., uh, I reported again uh, SN SMS, Sir, the re Sir, latest report from operating elements in Maguindanao states that the security elements who were engaged by BAFF slant MILF elements suffered heavy casualties. They were over reportedly overrun. CCH and international monitoring team are in the area re retrieving casualties. The main effort is still in the process of rendezvous with other SAF and AFP elements. That's my last message, Your Honor. Thank you, General Purisima. Senator Escudero, your questions? Thank you, Madam Chairman. General Purisima, ilang paglilinaw lang po. At maraming salamat sa pagpapamahagi ninyo ng texts nyo ni Pangulo Aquino at um, sa pagitan po ninyo dalawa. Una, um, ayon sa inyo, nag-text si Pangulo Aquino, if I may quote, if I remember correctly, 160 SAF troopers were directly involved in this operation, plus provisions for other PNP and AFP units to assist. Um, maliwanag po na tila sa pagkakaunawa ng Pangulo, dapat kasama ang AFP. At binanggit nyo kay General Napenas na lumabas kayo sa bahay pangarap, di ba? Ikaw na bahala kay General Katapang. Ano po nangyari? Your Honor, when I said uh, ako na ang bahala kay General Katapang, it was only the information that I will give time on target. Ako na lang po mag inform sa kanya time on target. But the coordination, Your Honor, is not, um, is not mine because, uh, Your Honor, I am suspended. Darating po ako dyan, miyamiyan ng konti. Um, Tinext nyo rin po si Pangulo Aquino. They are supported by mechanized and artillery support, sir. Mga bandang alas 7.30 po ng umaga to. Was this an accurate statement? That was the information I got from uh, the Westmincom commander, Your Honor, that uh, the, we are supporting, we are supported by uh, mechanized artillery and infantry elements. Sir, supported, uh, past tense, hindi future tense. So, binigay niyo informasyon kay Pangulo ng alas 7.30 ng tumaga, e eh, meron ng artillery at mechanized support. I was just relying, Your Honor, on... Uh, what uh, was uh, informed to me by the uh, Westmincom commander and... Uh, You're referring to General Guerrero? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Nirelay nyo lamang yung sinabi niya? Yes, Your Honor. But now, you realize that that was not true? Yes, Your Honor. Now, if I may proceed, Madam Chair, um, if I may ask um, our resource persons, kailan nyo unang nalaman itong Mama Sapano operation... Sino nagsabi sa inyo at ano ang ano ang sinabi sa inyo? May we start, for example, with um, Secretary, with General Espina, sir. What time did you first know about it? Who told you? And what were you told? Madam Chair, Your Honors, uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo. <coughs> I came to know about the Mama Sapano operation January 25 at about 5.30 in the morning. General Alan Purisima called me up informing me if I can accurately uh, recall sabi niya Bok nakuha na si Marwan just to inform me my reaction was I said uh, ganun ba? hindi kako magaling and then 
5.30 Sunday yun, sir. Uh, nabasa ko, sir, yung text na pinadala sa akin ni General Napeñas. HVT, etc. High value target. They're on operation. And then, then uh, I even sent him a text message. Sabi ko, congratulations, Leo. Because uh, si Marwan nga nakuha, etc. But he sent me another message from 5.30, 5.30-ish, going towards 6 o'clock in the morning, na napapainkwentro na raw sila. My instinct, sir, was to call up General uh, Rusty Guerrero, uh, and it was at 6.04 in the morning, Sinabi ko sa kanya, Mista, napapainkwentro ang mga bata ko sa Maguindanao. Tulungan mo naman. Ang uh, reaction niya, sir, was, uh, an- ano yan? Eh, h- hindi ko alam. Basta nandun sila, napapainkwentro. And sabi niya, uh, hindi na naman nag-coordinate. Anyway, sabi ko sa kanya, tulungan mo. Uh, saka na tayong magsitahan ng mga tao, basta tulungan mo, napapainkwentro. Secretary Ross, sir, same question. Sir, at uh, uh, good morning to all. I received a uh, text message from the Director of uh, Intelligence of the PNP uh, <coughs> forwarding to me a copy of uh, what he received together with the uh, senior officers of the PNP. Uh, it reads, for OIC PNP from DSAF. So I am copied by him, uh, his text, Napeña's text, to the hierarchy of the PNP. Update three operations against HVTs based on the report of the ME J.I. at Marwan was neutralized but the body was left behind due to heavy volume of fire and one wounded soft trooper. The containment blocking force was engaged 2 kilometers east of Tukala Nipaw, GC 68006657717. There was heavy firefight and soft troops suffered casualties. Extraction is ongoing and support from the AFP was requested. He sent that to me at about uh, 7, uh, well, it says 7.43. Uh, I replied to him, uh, thank you, I'm going to Sambuanga now, please get more details. Shortly thereafter, in the timestamp of my uh, phone, I forwarded the same message uh, to the president at 8.09 a.m. Uh, I added on top of it, Sir, meaning to the President, just received this and getting more details. And then the message that I had read uh, earlier. Just to follow up, Secretary, were you with the President um, when you went to Zamboanga? That's correct. Uh, Sec. Boltz and I were on the same plane as the President. We left uh, shortly after 8.30. Um, so, nung tinex nyo, hindi pa kayo nagkikita? Hindi pa. Wala, uh, nag, nandun kami nag-aantay sa, sa terminal, sa Kalayaan, sa Villamore. Uh, hindi pa dumadating ang pangulo. Noong nakita po kayo sa Villamore, nagkaroon po ba kayo ng pagkakataon pag-usapan ito? At ano pong mga kautosan kung meron man ang binigay? Wala po. Secretary Guzmin, same question, sir. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, kami po ay nakarating sa Sambuanga ng 10.20 around that time. Uh, I was with the Secretary uh, Rojas at saka si B. ang Pangulo. Nung mga 11 o'clock, nag ho yung uh, si Chief of Staff at saka si General Guerrero at pinag-uusapan yung text message na galing sa Commander 6 ID. And may I read the text na pinakita sa akin. As of now, our own troops link with the PNP SAF. However, the most engaged SAF elements is about 300 meters still. I directed to provide suppression fires so the SAF can disengage and withdraw. Our armored vehicle can no longer move forward as the area is generally marshy and swampy. 
Yan ang napag-usapan namin. Uh, tapos noon, di, dito ko pa lang nalaman na may operation against Marwan. Sino po nagsabi uli sa inyo noon, Secretary? Si General Guerrero? General Guerrero po at uh, si General Katapang nag-uusap tungkol dito at pinakita yung text message. Ano pong ginawa nyo um, matapos nyo mabasa yung mensaheng yon bilang SND? Pinag-usapan ho namin na nag, uh, nag uh, re react na yung 6th Division so that uh, developments ang kinakailangan kong makuha. Nagbigay po ba kayo ng kautusan sa Air Force na tumulong o kung handa ang Air Force tumulong ng mga panahong yun? Hindi po. Wala pong ganun? Wala po. Gayun din si Pangulong Aquino? Ng mga panahong yun? Sa, kung narinig nyo? Yung mic po, sir. <coughs> wala, wala po akong narinig na ganun kautusan. General Katapang, sir, same question. Madam Chair, Your Honor, this is the text message of Director uh, General Purisima at about 5.51 a.m. Mista, good morning. For your information, our troopers were able to neutralize HBT in Mamasapano area this morning. They are now on withdrawal phase and they need the support of mechanized troops in the area. They have coordinated with G3 of 6ID and, mechan and the mechanized brigade. Thank you. And then my reply was, okay, Mr. Troops are now in the area monitoring at about uh, 10, 16 a.m. Sinabi po ng ganung kaagad na nag-coordinate na sila sa first mechanized? Uh, hindi pa naman po. Uh, sabi lang po dito, they need the support of the mechanized troops in the area. And what um, did you do, if any, sir? Uh, right, right, immediately upon my arrival at uh, Sambuanga, I was met by General Guerrero, and he told me that uh, there's an encounter and that General Espina was calling me and uh, the, uh, they were asking for support. And I told General Guerrero, uh, provide all the support in as much as they need uh, our uh, uh, assets. What time was that, sir? I think we arrived about more or less uh, 10. We were ahead at, at the arrival of the President and General Gasmin General. Um, maybe about 10.15 or 10. At uh, uh, that time that I arrived in the airport, that's maybe 10, also 10.15, Your Honor. General Guerrero, sir? Same question, sir. Madam Chair, Your Honor. Uh, the first uh, information that I received about the incident is the call from uh, Director General, uh, Deputy Director General Spina. At 6.04 a.m., I received a phone call in my cell phone from uh, General Spina, and he mentioned to me uh, the operations in Mamasapano, and they are requesting that they be supported on the ground. So I replied that I will be directing the Division Commander, General Pangilinan, uh, to provide support to the uh, SAF. At 6.05 and 6.06 a.m., I received two succeeding uh, text from Director General Alan Purisima which says that Bok, good morning, can I call? At 6.06 a.m. I received a text from Police Director Napeñas but it contained only my cell phone number. And at 6.07 a.m. I called up six, CG6ID General Pangilinan to has, ask him about the encounter, if he knows anything about the encounter, to which he replied, hindi po niya alam ang nangyayari. But he received a text earlier, uh, which he mentioned at 0506, about the law enforcement operations of Director Napeñas. So I instructed him to provide the necessary support on the ground. After that, sir, uh, Director Napeñas called me up at 6.09, and, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, at 6.09, I called up General Purisima in response to his text. And I asked him about his concern. And he told me the same uh, issue about the Mambasapano encounter. And he was asking support from my troops in central Mindanao. 
At 6.10, I received a phone call from Director De Peñas, and he asked that if we can provide support to his units in, in Mama Sapano. To which I replied, I told him I already talked to General uh, Pangilinan about that, and we are providing support based on the available resources on the ground, Your Honor. Did you have the chance to talk to the President while you were in Zamboanga City with him about this matter, sir? Yes, Your Honor. And um, you briefed him about the situation? I was actually called to a small room together with the Secretary of Tassel Defense and the Secretary of Interior, and I was asked about what's happening in, in, in my area, in central Mindanao. So I told him that I was called by General Spina, and I was informed about what's happening. So I already informed the President that I already directed the CG6ID to provide the necessary support on the ground. This was around what time, sir? I think it's about 1100 or uh, before noon, Your Honor. At that time, was there any sense of urgency in your briefing, um, both the SILG, SND, and the President? Or was it an air of calm wherein everything seemed to be under control insofar as you were concerned, given that you have already given such a directive to General Pangilinan? I, I, I cannot... Uh, hindi, hindi ko po masabi kung ano yung reaction ng ating presidente, but the, the report that I received coming from my... is very vague at that time. Ang alam ko lang po ay merong encounter. So kailangan po lang bigyan ng suporta. Wala po kaming kapicture nung... Ano po yung extent nung encounter ng SAP? I do not even know how many SAP were involved. So what what I gave the uh, what I informed the president is I already gave guidance to the 6th Infantry Division Commander, Your Honor. Gave guidance and order for them to support. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Um, General Pangilinan, sir. Same question, sir. Uh, Your Honor, Madam Chair, I came to know of the incident at around six in the morning of 25 January. When I read the text coming from uh, <coughs> Director Napeñas, and may I quote the exact text he sent to quote, Ed, good AM, for your information, on January 25, 2015, at about 0 to 30 hours, PNP SAF, supported by Maguindanao PPO, PRO, ARMM, shall be conducting LEO and serve warrant of arrest against HBTs in Mama Sapano, Maguindanao. Troops are underway. Coordination was also done with CO, Persmec, and Port IB. Thank you very much, sir. Now, um, may I ask the, sec the officials I asked earlier, including Secretary Ross and Secretary Volts, General Katapang, did anyone impress upon the President as the Commander-in-Chief um, of the gravity of the situation that was happening on the ground? Because if I base it on General Purisima's text messages to the President, wala namang sinabing malala yung sitwasyon eh. Sinabi lang niya napapalaban, but that there was already, which was not true, artillery and um, mechanized support. To your recollection, um, Secretary Ross or Secretary Gazmin, um, was there a, a sense of urgency na may ganto, may ganto, may ganyan, as we know right now, because we have the benefit of hindsight already? Sir. Sir, uh, the, the fact is, we did not know that there was such an operation that was launched. So, this bit of information, we could not put in the context of how many were at risk, how many had entered this zone of, of death. Uh, so, if you will note my response to the information that I, to, to the I received was, please get more information. In the course of the day, and I mentioned this in the previous uh, hearing, uh, the President asked some questions, also in the nature of, ano ba nangyayari? Uh, which... <coughs> He verbally conveyed that to me, which I texted then to uh, OIC, uh, OIC uh, Espina. No? Uh, this was uh, shortly after we arrived, 
at about 10.23, according to the timestamp of, uh, of my phone, uh, Pinoy getting other reports that are conflicting with each other. Example, 160 Dao SAF, 20 Dao hostiles. So why did they retreat? So I sent this to uh, OIC uh, Espina, and uh, he replied, uh, relayed to Director SAF, sir, from Director SAF, the hostiles in the area are much more than our troops. Uh, and the nearby mixed armed groups were quick to reinforce. So at that time, we are just trying to get a picture of what is happening, not knowing that, in fact, this operation had already been, uh, been launched. So in our conversation with the president, there was, no, there was no reason to say, oh, there's 55 na napaligiran, and, because we did not know, in fact, that the 55th, was in fact there in that area, uh, Mr. Mr. S Your Honor, uh, Mr. General Purisima, sir. You told the president through text that they are supported by mechanized and artillery support. But as General Guerrero and General Pangilinan said, hanggang kali lang dahil marshy yung lugar at walang artillery support dahil walang forward observers at that time. When did you know that this text of yours to the president was not true? Your Honor, uh, before I answer that, the text message of uh, General Guerrero at 8.03 a.m. is uh, meron ng coordination sa ground, tank, infantry, and artillery support are made available. At uh, 9.46, your, your Honor, there is also a text, text message from uh, General Guerrero from CG6ID. Sir, I already directed Mechanized Brigade together with uh, DRC to provide reinforcement to assist extrication if engaged, PNPSF. They are move 0820 from Sharik Agwak. I cannot provide indirect fires as there is no FO on the ground. At 1013, uh, uh, Your Honor, I texted uh, uh, Jer Guerrero as of now. Our own drums link with PNPSF. However, the most engaged sub elements are about 300 meters still. I still directed to provide suppression fires so these sub can disengage and, with, and withdraw. Our we, armored vehicle can no longer move forward as the area is general marcy and swampy, Your Honor. What does suppression fire mean, sir? Ito ba yung artillery pinag-uusapan iba pa po yan? Not necessarily po, Super, uh, Your Honor. Uh, suppression fires po ang pwede po natin gamitin yan is through direct fires. Ang direct fires po na pwede natin gamitin are the rifle. Yan po yung basic issue po ng ating uh, infantry. Pwede rin pong gamitin pang suppression fire. Yung pong uh, um, guns na nakalagay po sa ating mga tanke. Yun po ang ibig sabihin ng suppression fires during that time. So, General Prisma, did you inform the President of that situation? Na yung mechanized, hindi talaga makaprovide ng support at yung artillery, hindi rin pwede. Your Honor, uh, the, uh, the presumption there is uh, the, uh, the President is in Sambuanga and he should have been briefed by the commanders there at. I'm in San Leonardo, Your Honor. But uh, at 817, in the, I have all, uh, this was the text message I sent to the uh, President. Uh, I, was, I, I was able to find out the time with the help of uh, the good Senator uh, Trillanes, that it was 817 where I texted the President, they are presently in contact with reinforcing elements. The containment forces are the ones in contact right now. They are supported by mechanized and artillery support, sir. And this, uh, the basis of this was the 803 message of General Guerrero, Your Honor. Which, as I said, is with not the benefit of hindsight, was not true. Yes, Your Honor. Um, you also texted... Um, General um, Napenas na nagbigay na ng directive ang MILF Central Command. Walang MILF pwede lumapit sa ongoing PNP operations at 9.48 a.m. What was the basis of that, sir? Your Honor, I was talking to somebody from uh, the MILF uh, who introduced to, to him uh, as MILF and uh, I was asking him if he can if he can uh, support us by letting the MILF withdraw from the area. 
just to support the el elements of SAP who are already in, uh, pinned down in that area, sir, Your Honor. General Katapang, sir, General Guerrero, according to Secret General Purisima, dapat daw nasabihan ng Pangulo na hindi umabot, nasabihan po ba siya o hindi? Yung artillery at saka yung mechanized. When uh, you briefed him. I was not able to brief him. It was General Guerrero who briefed him, Your Honor. General Guerrero, sir, was he informed at 11 o'clock that um, the mechanized could only reach up to the edge of the highway and that artillery was not available or possible at that time? No, Your Honor. Uh, we did not get, get into the details. Um, Your Honor, may I clarify the Please, statement of uh, General Purisima? I confirmed that I texted him that, to quote, meron ng coordination sa ground, tank, infantry, and artillery support are made available. It was sent at 8.03, Your Honor. And my, my intent in telling him about this is these are the available forces on the ground. Meaning, ito po yung nakalay down sa area na Maguindanao. That we have mechanized infantry and artillery that are made, are, are available to support their forces. Hindi ko po sinasabing pumuputok na yung artillery at nanudo na po yung uh, mga tanke. Ito po ay call ng ground commander. Ang sinasabi ko lang po, ito po ang available sa area kasi ngayon lang kayo nagsabi. Kung sinabihan po kami earlier, I could have deployed air, air assets the day before, but there was no coordination made with us at my level, Your Honor. General Guerrero, when you were speaking with the President, did you give him the impression that or did he give you the impression that he felt that there was military presence providing assistance already? Yes, Your Honor. I, I told the President that I already directed the 6th Infantry Division Commander to support the, the SAP troopers. Pero hindi po ba bung, bungi ang report ninyo? Dahil ang alam ng Pangulo may military doon. Now, with play of words made available, but actually not being able to penetrate because of the situation or the lack of an FO. So, do you think that you might have been remiss in not informing the President, Sir, the military is there, but this is the situation. Shouldn't that be your responsibility? Nasabihin sa Pangulo, hindi po makapasok yung military doon dahil kulang pa ng coordination. Again, Your Honor, uh, we did not get into the details. I just Why mentioned... Why not, Sir? Why not? Were you busy talking about we another were, operation in Zamboanga? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We were in Zamboanga purposely to brief the President on the Zamboanga City car bomb blast. But at that time, did you realize the gravity of the situation in Mama Sapa, no? Uh, not, Your Honor, because again, hindi po namin alam yung nangyayari sa ground. Wala po kaming complete picture of what's happening because pieces of information galing po sa 6ID commander ang nakarating lang po sa amin. So that is why I cannot present even the the uh, total picture of what's happening in Mama Sapano. Tama po. Kaya yun nga po yung gusto ko malinawan. So hindi ninyo alam ng mga alas 10 ng umaga, yung mga oras na yun, kung ilan na yung mga namamatay o mga kailangan, hindi ba malinaw sa inyo yon? Hindi nakarating sa inyo yon? Hindi po, Your Honor. Sir, do you belong to the same class as General Purisima? Class of 81? General Guerrero, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Um, you studied together, um, these words are made available, I already directed. Um, it seemed to have, sati to have satisfied General Purisima, it satisfied Desire Ops. Wala bang technical na ibig sabihin ho yan? Napag sinabing made available, ito lang yun. Napag sinabing um, coordinated, ito ibig sabihin nun. Napag sinabing I have ordered or directed, ito rin ang ibig sabihin nun. Because it seems, to me at least, nung sinabi niyong available, Contento na si General Purisima nung dinirect niyo si General Pangilinan. Um, again, we have the benefit of hindsight now, sir. Um, so that's a big difference. But isn't there a strict definition of these words so that when you say it, it only means this much and not this much? Kasi ang pagkakaintindi ko dyan kay General Purisima nung sinabi niyo made available, nandun na. But it actually took off at 8.20, sir, right? 8.20 umalis, you mechanized, going to the area. Pero nung nag-text si General Purisima kay Pangulo Aquino ng pasado alas 7, they are supported. ID na ho eh. Meaning, nando na. Yun ang pagkakaunawa ko sa text na yun. General Purisima, sir? 
Your Honor, the text message was sent at 8.17 in the morning, Your Honor, to the President. Nag-take off po yung mechanize ng 8.20 eh. Kung ang text man po nyo sa Presidente, 8.17, they are supported by mechanize. Wala pa ho doon yung mechanize eh. So again, that is not, that information given to the President was not entirely accurate. In fact, it was false. With the understanding that basis sa available na sinabi ni General Guerrero, yun po ang sinabi nyo. Yes, Your Honor. Sir, the difference between supported by mechanized and made available, hindi ba malaki pagkakaiba nun? You could have just quoted perhaps what General Guerrero texted you. My uh, understanding, Your Honor, is that uh, it will be uh, the mechanized and the artillery and the infantry elements will be supporting the, uh, the troops on the ground. That is my understanding on the text message of General Guerrero, Your Honor. My time is up, but that understanding, General Purism, unfortunately, proved very costly to the um, staff members in the field because that was the understanding of most of the officials as well. But in reality, that was not the case from where um, they were coming from. Again, Madam Chair, given the lack of coordination, perhaps, I don't think, well, personally, I empathize with AFP. Hindi ganong kabilis makakagalaw kung alasais sila nasabihan. Um, without revealing anything, um, sir, as a last question, Madam Chair, usually how long before you can actually mobilize? With the understanding din, sir, sa probinsya namin, maraming ganyan eh. Inaambush usually yung reinforcement, hindi naman yung unang tropang napapalaban eh. Ang dami ho nangyaring ganun sa amin. So preparations would also have to be made. How long before? That's the fastest, sir. Uh, Your Honor, during the time, yung pong available forces on the ground, yun po ang immediately na nai-deploy po natin. Yun po ang division reserve available during the time. So, yun pong, uh, uh, dahil po sa kakulangan ng informasyon, kaya nagkaroon po ng pagtawag ang brigade commander dun po sa operations officer ng SAF. At that the only time na at least nagkaroon siya ng idea what is really going on on the ground. Uh, And Madam from Chair, there... Excuse me, General, uh, excuse me. Uh, over here, Madam Chair. Ma Madam Chair, I just believe that uh, revealing what is the reaction time of any of the uniform services will give information. They will know how much time they have before before a an army unit or a police unit can react. No? So that information perhaps is best said in a, in a... Let me rephrase the question then. Definitely faster than... 12 hours if coordination was made. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. It will be real time. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, yes. Madam Thank you, Senator Escudero. Senator Gilon has just, a just clarification. Just to, to pursue the point of Senator Escudero, uh, General Purisima, paliwanag mo nga, ano po ang pagkaintindi nyo sa coordination? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Sa inyong paningin? Your Honor, ang, uh, ang pagkaintindi ko po sa coordination ay Isinisilawalat natin sa mga tropang uh, kasama natin na meron tayong operasyong gagawin at kung ano magiging papel po nila, Your Honor. May operasyon tayong gagawin at kung ano ang dapat nilang gawin. Ganun po ang pagkaintindi mo. Yes, Your Honor. Alright. Ilang beses at kailan sinabi ng Pangulong Aquino na makipag-coordinate po kayo sa AFP? Your Honor, the uh, the The main point of the uh, meeting in uh, January 9, Your Honor, was uh, the coordination. So at as early lang. as January 9, sinabihan na po kayo ng Pangulo na makipag-coordinate? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, yan ba ang katapusan o bago yan may sinabi din sa inyo makipag-coordinate? Basically, Your Honor, that is the main content of the uh, meeting, Your Honor. After that, were you all again reminded to coordinate before January 25? Uh, I cannot remember, Your Honor. Uh, What about before January 9? In December, uh, Your Honor, uh, yung din po yung uh, main, uh, main topic na may coordination din, Your Honor. December 20, kailan ho yan? That was the operation in uh, December uh, 12, Your Honor. December before 12. the operation in December 12. Okay. So, palagi pong inuulit sa inyo ng Pangulo na kailangan makipag-coordinate? Yes, Your Honor. Ngayon. Um, uh, ngayon dito ba maliwan nag, nakipag-coordinate ka ba uh, in accordance with the instructions of the President? Hindi po ako may trabaho nun Your Honor because the uh, 
at that time, Your Honor, I was already suspended and the instruction was directed to the ground commander to coordinate with uh, the AFP elements on the no. ground. The, 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 the President also spoke to the ground commander. Yes, Your Honor. During when? January 9? January 9, Your Nandun Honor. Nandun po kayo? Yes, Your Honor. At sinabing makipag-coordinate? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Now, uh, ano po ipaliwanag mo nga para sa amin? Ano pong ibig sabihin ng time on target? Anong ibig sabihin nun? Mayroon bang, is that a military term? Or is that a police term? Your Honor, ang uh, police term ng time on target, mm. uh, kung, uh, kung ipapaliwanag, Your mm. Honor, is mm. kung halimbawa po, Meron po tayong search warrant na isa serve sa isang uh, uh, target po natin. Ang ginagawa po natin time on target is that ide-deploy na po natin yung mga magko-coordinate sa mga uh, police station, sa barangay captain, and observers sa mga target natin, Your Honor. And Pero once, oh, yeah. once the uh, search warrant is approved, may tatawag na po lahat, magko-coordinate na po, and then ma-implement na po yung... Uh, yung operation, Your Honor. That In is, this particular case, di ba masapano operations, uh, how did you apply the time on target principle? In-inform mo sila as it's coming out after uh, you reach the target. Your Honor, the uh, coordination is uh, stated na gagawin po ng uh, ground commander, Your Honor. No, no, pakisagot lang. Ang ibig sabihin dito, applying this to this particular operation, yung time on target from the way it's coming out, the time on target theory is that you inform them after you have reached the target. When you have reached the target, Your Honor. That's correct, you have reached the target. Yes, Your Honor. Therefore, hindi po po pwede mag-coordinate at, ma at apply yung principle the time on target dahil sasabihin mo lang pag nandun na kayo. In fact, ang lumalabas sa mga text, sinabi mo yung uh, operations, nandun na yung tropa. Tama po ba yun? Yun po yung nasa plano ng uh, PNP SAP, Your Honor. Therefore, you are really, wala talagang coordination as we ordinarily understand it. As we, as uh, the common meaning of coordination, hindi po nangyari. Dahil yung coordination mo, pagkatapos mo nang, nandun na yung tropa sa harap ni Marwan, at, uh, at tiramaan na si Marwan, saka mo sinabi doon sa mga uh, counterparts mo sa armed forces. Maliwanag po yan sa mga text messages. Yun po yung uh, nasa plano ng PNP SAP, Your Honor. So there was really no coordination? Ang nakalagay po sa kanila, Your Honor, is time on target ang coordination po nila, Your Honor. Sige. Okay. Sige, salamat po. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh. Senator Trillanes, your questions, please. Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair. Uh, if, Senator, can I just, since they're exchanging texts, can we re request the resource persons to submit a uh, written copy of their text exchanges. Yes, Senator. But we gave you copies of that from our executive session. No, but the Sila General Katapang, Sila Secretary Mar, Secretary Gasmin, and the others. Okay, for those that uh, discuss their text messages today, Even please say, submit us a copy. Um, oh, ICSP. Na din. No, Dad. Thank you, Senator. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, just to clarify the the uh, the word coordinate in the military context, uh, anybody who is not in the operational plan, hindi kasama, hindi na coordinatean. That's uh, how we understood it. Dapat na sa operational plan kasi kasama sila dun sa communication plan, where in yung mga radio frequencies ando doon. So, hindi pwede yung mga verbal or mga tawag or in this case yung time on target. Yung time on target concept is alien to the military precisely because we need to have prior coordination at may coordinating conference pa ito bago lalakad yung mga tropa to make sure walang uh, misencounter, walang friendly fire. So, yan yung coordination in the strict uh, sense of the word. Now, uh, in... Uh, Madam Chair, uh, just before I start my line of questioning, can I, uh, I think General Purisima is ready to give the time uh, of the text messages. Uh, General Purisima, sir. Yes, Your Honor, thank you for your, uh, for your information on how to get the time. Uh, the 
At 7.36, Your Honor, why was it left behind the other two targets? That was the uh, time that I was given, Your Honor. And then the next uh, message is at 7.48, Your Honor. I, sir, accordingly, the nearest target on the line of approach is M1, and when they hit the primary target, the other house where Basit Osman was located with other elements reacted and fired at the troopers. There are about 15 to 20 armed elements. It was 4.30 a.m., and it was decided that they pull out after gathering pictures and other evidences. They were the secondary target, sir. So the next uh, message was at 7.59, Your Honors. Uh, by uh, His Excellency, if I remember correctly, 160 subtroopers were directly involved in this operation, plus provisions from other PNP and AFP units to assist. The terrain is flat and clear, as opposed to upland, forested, or jungle terrain. Why could not they con why could they not contain, add, or overwhelm the 15 to 20 member opposing force? Are they still in contact with other two targets? and not the opposing forces escape. Are we now back to square one? That is 7.59, Your Honor. And at 8.17, Your Honor, uh, my, re my response was, they are presently in contact with the reinforcing elements from BIFF. The containment forces are the ones in contact right now. They are supported by mechanized and artillery support, sir. That was at 8.17. And at 8.18, I sent another text message the local target, Basit, and his group were the first group that were, that were engaged by the main effort group. At 8.41, Your Honor. Uh, excuse uh, me, General, uh, General Purisma. Uh, uh, what time was that? 8.18, uh, Your Honor. 8.18, okay. At 8.41, Your Honor, the, uh, His Excellency sent me a text message again. Review your earlier and latest text. They differ as to which was engaged first. At 8.45, Your Honor, I uh, sent this uh, SMS. I mean, sir, the first target was M1, where they were able to neutralize first. The group of Basit retaliated, which was 100 meters away. That was at 8.45 in the morning, Your Honor. Okay, thank you very much, uh, General Purisima. Uh, we need to, uh, Madam Chair, can we give copies to the media? Uh, at least as far as the text message exchanges between General Purisima and the President. Uh, because uh, right now, a lot of uh, malicious reports are coming out that uh, they are projecting that the President knew about this situation, the dire situation of the 55th Company, as early as 5 a.m., and he didn't do anything about it. Now, based on the information we got this morning, that uh, picture apparently was not true because the president uh, didn't get the entire picture as for the simple reason that even the commanders, senior commanders themselves, did not have the true picture. And uh, apparently only uh, General Napenas uh, and later on some uh, tactical commanders are aware fully of the situation on the ground, uh, Madam Chair. It's noted, um, Senator Chilianes, so I don't see any reason why we shouldn't provide the media copies of that. It's been discussed in our public hearing. So I instruct the committee secretariat to please uh, make several photocopies for our release. Okay, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So uh, just to reiterate, yung mga commanders, yung mga nakausap ni, General, ni uh, President Aquino dur during the morning of the 25th, Hindi, hindi rin entire yung picture na napapaligiran yung mga SAF troopers ng mga hostile elements at kailangan na ng tulong. Uh, is that uh, accurate, uh, Secretary Gasmin? Hindi ho. Ako, ako po, hindi ko na kausap si Presidente tungkol dito sa mamasapano okay. incident. Uh, because I was concentrating on the uh, breakout of the Abu Sayyaf in the city jail, mm -hmm. which is uh, connected to the bombing of uh, the car bomb in Sambuanga City. Okay, thank you. Well, yun lang kasi, no? Kasi ang kaya marami nagagalit kay Presidente Aquino dahil nga daw, alam niya na na ganun yung sitwasyon pero wala siyang ginawa. Ngayon tatanungin kita, General ay Secretary Gasmin, sir. Uh, in your uh, experience as a military commander, spanning from the time pani, um, uh, 
President Marcos in, in, and even kay uh, President Cory, yung bang presidente nagbibigay ng tactical commands. Like, sige, kanyunin nyo na. Or gamitan nyo na Air Force. Or kung ano man. Maraming salamat po, Your Honor, for that question. Kasi naipakita kanina ng AFP yung chain of command. Mm -hmm. Yung operational, yung strategic, strategic at saka yung tactical. tactical. Yes. Ang presidente, nagbibigay ng general general guidance, strategic. Ngayon, yung pag, paano huhulihin, saan huhulihin, trabaho ng tactical commander yun. Okay. So, at least maliwanag yon. Kasi marami nag-expect. Alam niyo yung mga kababayan natin, syempre hindi naman naiintindihan itong uh, mga ganito sistema. Kaya very helpful yung presentation ni uh, General Katapang. Na marami sila nag-expect na, alam mo na, ba't di mo inutos yung nabagsakan ng kanyon? Uh, so, at least dito, nakikita natin, hindi ganun yon. Ang presidente, binibigyan lang siya ng update kung ano yung picture, pero iniiwanan niya yung mga, mga senior commanders niya to give the proper advice doon sa ground commanders kung kailangan. Pero, left, ang pinakang ideal situation is the operational commanders and the tactical commanders are left unto themselves to deal with these situations kasi ang, assumption, ang presumption dito is they are competent enough to handle the crisis uh, that is in front of them. Yung presidente, hindi pwedeng lahat ng operations sa Luzon besides Mindanao ay siya ang magiging uh, tactical decision maker. Hindi po ganun yun. At uh, so, um, at least naliwanag natin yun na uh, Secretary Gatsmin. Then, uh, Pupunta tayo dito sa dito sa paggamit ng uh, ng artillery, General Pangilinan. Uh, bakit hin sabi ni General Guerrero hindi nag-hold back ang uh, operational commander ng paggamit ng uh, resources? Ay i-clarify ko na, General Guerrero sir. Uh, kasama niyo si Presidente Aquino, nagsabi ba siya na mag-hold back kayo ng assets? ng inyong uh, command. Madam Chair, Your Honor, hindi po. Wala pong ganong instruction sa akin, Your Honor. And in fact, sinabi nyo, based doon sa text message nyo, na gamitin lahat ng resources. Is that is that true? Yes. Uh, I, I informed the President that we made available yung ano yung nasa ground na hawak ng tactical Six commander, seven. which is mechanized infantry and artillery. Okay. Yung po yung available, okay. Your Honor. So, General Pangilinan, the resources were made available to you. Ano ang uh, considerations mo doon sa artillery fire? Your Honor, Madam Chair, in firing or in the utilization of artillery, three things are to be considered and are of equal importance. Una po ay ang hitting the target or hitting the enemy. Second po ay kailangan-kailangan hindi natin matamaan or avoidance of hitting our own troops or tinatawag po natin friendly fires. Pangatlo po ay avoidance of hitting civilians or inflicting collateral damage. At yung pong tatlo na yan are of equal importance. And in order for us to attain that objective, kinakailangan po natin itong mga bagay na ito. Una po, kailangan alam natin ang disposition and location exact location of all the forces operating on the ground. Second po, kailangan malaman natin where are the enemy. Pangatlo po, ay kailangan nating malaman the area of operations because we want to know where are they operating, ano po ang operational environment, lalong-lalo na po na dapat nating malaman if there are civilian or communities in the area of operations. At pangatlo po, kinaapang-apat po, kinakailangan meron pong a forward observer who will direct the fires. At ang pang panglima po na isa sa pinaka-importa ay kailangan magkaroon po ng komunikasyon dun sa ground at dun po sa ating tinatawag na firing battery or fire direction center at saka sa command post po na kung saan yun ang nagdi-decide kung kailan ipuputok ang artillery. And during that time, nung sila po ay nagre-request ng artillery in the morning, Those factors are all absent, Your Honor. So even during the coordination directly of General Talino with the mechanized brigade, 
wala po yung uh, ganong informasyon na uh, General Panginginan, sir? Wala po, Your Honor. Negative po, Your Honor. Uh, meron kayo ditong ano, eh, uh, statement na walang forward observer. Para lang sa kaalaman ng mga uh, ng lahat, ano, ito bang forward observer kahit sino na lang pwede ba ang mag-act as forward observer? Usually po, ang ating forward observer ay may training po dapat. May training po dapat dahil kailangan may kaalaman siya na makita kung saan bumabagsak o yung impact ng ating bala at kailangan alam niya rin kung paano mag-adjust ng fire. Yan po ang mga katangian ng ating pong uh, forward observe. Unang-una, dapat siya marunong bumasa ng mapa, marunong siyang gumamit ng kanyang kompas para maidirect niya ang ating pong uh, fire direction center kung paano kukumputin at saan ibabagsak po yung bala na manggagaling po sa ating artillery. Your Honor. Okay. Uh, again, uh, dadagdagan ko lang yung sinabi ng General Pangilinan kasi importante yung forward observer kasi once nag-sabi uh, na siya na fire for effect, ito na yung sunod-sunod na napagputok ng kanyon at tatandaan natin, itong mga bala ng kanyon na ito, ito ay dinideliver ng lowest bidder. Ano? Na kahit ilang gramo lang ang mabawas doon sa charge, makakaapekto doon sa kung uh, saan babagsak yung uh, mga kanyon. At ang uh, base sa informasyon ay 30 meters lang ang diferensya, ang distance from the SAF na 55 and yung mga MILF at BIFF na kalaban. So with that, ano talaga? It's a danger close na tinatawag kasi ang kill radius ng uh, ng 1 OPIP na na artillery 105 is around the uh, 50 to 100 uh, meters. So kaya yon ang uh, hindi basta-basta ginagamit ng ng operational and tactical commanders. Now, uh Just a few questions to the CCCH, General Galveser. What time nag-effect yung ceasefire? Sir, nag-effect po talaga total ceasefire is between the MILF and the government is government forces is four o'clock. Four o'clock. It. What time bumagsak yung white phosphorus na rounds? I believe by five four. 548, 548, sir. Okay. Ang reason ba kung bakit huminto yung putukan is because of your ceasefire or because of that white phosphorus rounds? General Galvez, sir? I believe sa ceasefire yung mupa yung putukan between the IMILF. But yung sa 105, hindi po namin po... Hindi nyo alam? Oo, hindi po namin. Dahil nung... Mga four pa lang, papasok na kayo eh, doon sa area eh. Yes sir, uh, actually sir, uh, nakapasok na po sa area yung uh, iba ng uh, more or less 340-330. Dahil nalaman na po namin okay. na meron na pong 27 na patay. So hindi, hindi entirely accurate yung statement na kaya huminto ang putukan because of the white phosphorus rounds. I believe so sir, kasi meron pang sporadic firings uh, until uh, 7 o'clock po sir. Okay. Then, uh, ito lang, last question. Kung hindi ba kayo pumasok, kung hindi nag-ceasefire, kung hindi pumasok yung CCCH and yung adjag, ano ang nangyari? Uh, can you tell us, uh, General Glalvez, sir? Sir, I think there is a uh, strong uh, indications na baka pati yung 27 na, na PNP, sir, na yun, baka makuyo po yun, sir. Based on our experience sa Pintakasi, hindi po titigilan po yan para hanggang hindi maubos. So, ang sinasabi nyo, yung CCCH in a way nakatulong or nakatulong sa pag-save ng uh, army at ng uh, SAF doon sa sa 284th uh, company uh, yes yes sir kasi ang uh, ang ang natin sir kung uh, tutusin natin sir ang uh, arm arm group doon sa area na yun sir is more or less a uh, uh, 1000 kung hindi po natin na-spy po yun uh, yung 28 po na na, na remaining na ano, na 27 na remaining na PNP, madali po yung mak mak makuyog po, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, General Galvez. Uh, that's all, uh, Your Honor.
Just on General Madam Galvez Chair. while he's around, did General Purisima ever inform you of this operation? Sir, uh, uh, I'm very, uh, I'm very unfortunate, po, sir, na wala po ng uh, PNP na tumawag po sa akin. So when did the first time did you know about this, co this operation? Uh, I know this operation 6:38, uh, sir. Uh, to tell you frankly, may sense of betrayal na po sa sa atin, sir, kasi ang uh, may may parang parang betrayal na po sa atin, sir, in terms of uh, sa coordination, kasi pagka ang counterpart po, sir, ang nagsabi nun uh, na may nangyari without coordination. For them, uh, what the, they have signed, para kan po yun sir, eh. sa kanila, that is a uh, dignity. Uh, pagka hindi po tayo nag-coordinate sa kanila, parang ang feeling nila sir, they were betrayed and not being trusted by the mechanism. Senator Escudero. Just to clarify, Madam Chair, hindi po ba sir, BIFF ang na-encounter ng 84th? Hindi sir, naman MILF eh. Sir, halo-halo na po yun, sir. Uh, kung yung unong una, sir, uh, most probably, sir, uh, BIFF ang uh, yung sa Marwan side, yung ang nakita namin, sir, na ano, na, na nakikwento nila. But uh, during the, ano, the, the succession of fires uh, and encounters uh, during uh, the late, later in the afternoon and the evening, uh, ang ano ko, sir, dito, suspicion ko po, sir, is uh, already... Uh, so, naggampe ang MILF at saka BIFF? Sir, gano po kasi sir yung ano, yung uh, yung I'm asking, sir, yes or no? Y yes sir, uh, pita kasi po sir. So nagkampi nga sila. Yes sir, pita kasi sir. Senator Gingona, it's your turn for your questions. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Before I ask question, uh, just an administrative matter, Madam Chair. Uh, General Napeñas, last hearing I asked uh, that you submit and you said you would submit a coordination matrix of the operations. I have checked with the Comsec and there has been no submission, sir. I did submit during the executive session, Your Honor. I did submit. In fact, during the, the executive session, is that the same? Sorry, did did you submit the matrix or just a copy of your text messages? It's the coordination table matrix, Your Honor. Uh, in fact, it was photocopied and the, the copy was returned to me during the executive session, Your Honor. Okay, we will take your word for it and we will check also our files. But Well, it seems there has been confusion because uh, as you can see from our faces, everybody is looking at each other. Uh, anyway, um, maybe the Quam second shed light. Ito yung sinasabing synchronization matrix. Yun ba yun? That's different, Your Honor. That's different. Sir, do you have a copy with you now so we can cross-check yes, with what we have? Yes, Your Honor, I will give have. a copy now. So I have this a document called the Task Coordination Table. Ito po. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Okay. So, uh, ang nakalagay dito, several entities, ano? Pero ang hinahanap ko, wala rin naman nakalagay time on target dito. If, Your Honor, if you could just read at the last uh, column. 
TOT. Yes, yes Your that's Honor. time on target. Yes, Your Honor. But I noticed that the Secretary of DILG is not in the list. Yes, Your Honor, because that covers only the operating units in the ground. So, as far as the DILG Secretary and General Espina, walang document that says TOT. It's not in the task coordination table, Your Honor. Where is it found then? Uh, that is supposed to be its a higher authority, and I can no longer uh, make the coordination on higher authority as far as I'm concerned, because it's higher. So it should be uh, the one uh, who approved the, the, the operations or the higher officer on me who will be doing that one. Otherwise, I will be bypassing their authority, Your Honor. So you're saying the one who, who should have done it was a higher authority than you? Yes, Your Honor. So in this case, in this particular case, who is the higher authority? During this operation, Your Honor, it should be General Purisima because uh, that was uh, then his statement when we left yung sa bahay pangarap during January 9. So General, uh, I'm supposed to make the coordination. Am I correct? No, Your Honor. The uh, What uh, I volunteered to do was to inform, not to coordinate. Okay, we have a situation now where General Napeña says it should be you, and now you're the one saying that it's not you. Am I correct? Is that what you're saying? Your Honor, information is different from coordination. So what I volunteer to do, Your Honor, is to inform General Katapang. If, no, no, I'm not talking about General Katapang. I'm talking about time on target coordination with the Secretary of the local governments and the PNP chief. That, that is also included, Your Honor. Time yes, yes, but General Napenas is saying it's your responsibility to do the coordination. You just heard him. Your Honor, uh, if you will uh, remember, I am suspended during those times, Your Honor. And uh, the, the authority was already delegated to the ground commander since April of that year, Your Honor, that we had been operating against uh, Marwan. So, okay. Uh, since you're saying because you're suspended, it's not you. Uh, in this case, then, ano mangyayari? Who should have done it? General Purisima, who should have done it then? I suppose, sir, the, uh, the ground commander should have done it. Because being the delegated authority, Your Honor. But he did not do it because he's saying that it's the higher authority that should do it. So, we have here a situation na nagtuturoan at what is clear is there was no coordination even on time on target with the secretary and the chief PNP. Your Honor, the, uh, the, what I volunteered to do is to inform General Katapang and uh, what I have said is wag muna sabihin sa dalawa time on target was the uh, men, uh, meaning of that uh, uh, statement, Your Honor. But, well, at uh, any rate, let's not debate anymore. I think klaro nangyari. It's crystal clear to everyone what happened, no? Um, yes, the General Senate Lepe, President. Uh, if you don't mind. Uh, General Napenas, uh, ilang beses po, noong, mula noong, noong January 25 po ba, ne, noong nagbabakbakan, Nakikipag-usap ka kay General Purisima? We have exchanges of uh, text messages, Your Honor, then may mga uh, pag-uusap din kami by phone. May pag-uusap kayo by as phone? As far as I can remember, pero most of the time, Your Honor, is done through exchanges of text messages. At uh, doon, uh, binibigyan ka niya ng advice? Uh, hindi po advice. Yung mga information po, Your Honor, regarding yung movement ng CCH, yung IMT, plus... Uh, May mga bagay pa sa nakikita natin doon sa text messages exchange namin. Oh, ano, ano yung pinag-usapan nyo dahil sinasabi mo hindi advice? Meron siyang ipinoforward na text messages hindi sa akin. Hindi yung usapan nyo, hindi yung text? Yung tungkol po doon sa, Your Honor, yung sa umagang-umaga pa lang na nasabihan ko na si General Spina, baka magulat ka. Uh, yung tungkol sa pag... Uh, ano ang sagot ni General Purisima? Yes, sir. Uh, sabi ko, nasabihan ko na, sir, si General Espina through text message yung sa umagang-umaga na yung operasyon. Ang sinasabi mo, dahil uh, ang, ang higher authority, sa dinatanong kang ina ni Senator Gingona, ang higher authority si Purisima. 
Yes, Your Honor, at that time, although sinabihan ko rin si General Spina, halos sabay yung text message ko sa kanila informing them about the operation so, ni Mama Sapana. So, nag-report ka kay General Purisima? Nagre-render ako ng report sa kanya, Your Honor, kasi uh, because of that time na uh, nung dinidiscuss yung operation nung January 9, doon sa taas, ay kasama-kasama po siya doon, Your Honor. Iyon ba ang feeling mo sinabi, sinasabi ni General Purisima, it was delegated to the ground commander Kayo ang ground commander. Did you feel that you could decide on everything as ground commander? Uh, Your Honor, uh, may limitation po sa aking sarili yung pagko-coordinate sa higher authority. Yun lang. Uh, yun po ang akin, Your Honor. Sige, so all those time, uh, i-inform rin si Purisa ba kung anong nangyayari? Yes, Your Honor. At uh, sa kabilang dako, ina-advise nga niya kung anong gagawin. Parang ganun nga po, Your Honor, nagbibigay din siya ng information sa akin tungkol yung ginagawa niya, yung pagtulong, yung text message ni General Guerrero, ipinuporward din niya sa akin, kung, Your Honor. Kung nakakatanggap pa ng advice sa higher authority, yun ba yung tinuturing mo ring order? Sa police po at military, Your Honor, kung nakakataas yung nagbibigay ng salita, hmm. ay naiiba po yun. Oh, kung nang galing sa baba, oh. napaakyat, oh. Hindi, sa yung galing aking... sa taas, pababa, alam na yun, order na yun, di ba? Sa polis at military. Ay, ganun nga po yun, Your Honor, sa aking pananaw. Kung pababa, uh, galing sa baba, pakyat, Hindi, yun ang advice taas, and recommendation. Hindi, galing sa taas, pababa, yun order na yun. Hindi po ba? Ganun na nga yun, Your Honor, siguro. Thank you, Senator Dillon. Senator Gingona, you may proceed, sir. Yes, okay, to move on on another matter. Um, Secretary De Lima, Ma'am, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. You have, am I correct that you have advanced the idea that the PNP, being a civilian organization, is not subject to um, the concept of chain of command? My view, Your Honor, is that the term chain of command in its strictest terms, in its strictest sense, mm -hmm. is of military construct. Therefore, since PNP is not a military organization, is now a civilian organization, part of the executive branch of government under the president, not as a commander-in-chief, but chief executive, it does not apply to the PNP strictly. Thank you, ma'am. But uh, how would you then, um, uh, I, have, I have, how would you then, um, Reconcile with this Executive Order 226, February 17, 1995, and I quote, institutionalization of the doctrine of command responsibility in all government offices, particularly at all levels of command in the Philippine National Police and other law enforcement agencies. In one paragraph of the Executive Order, it says, whereas, in order to ensure a more effective, sustained, and successful campaign against erring government personnel, it is imperative that the doctrine of command responsibility, unquote, be institutionalized and strictly applied in all government offices and at all levels of command in the PNP, Philippine National Police, and other law enforce enforcement agencies. This was signed by then President Fidel Ramos. Um, I'm not sure, Your Honor, if I have come across that executive order, but as you quoted that particular provision, it speaks of levels of command, and then it speaks of command responsibility, or more appropriately, in the broadest terms, it's supposed to be superior responsibility, because superior responsibility would apply even to civilian organizations like uh, like the PNP or even uh, executive departments of, of uh, government. Now, so co superior responsibility is the more acceptable term now if we are to apply it broadly because command responsibility would really just apply to military uh, organizations or military concepts. So I feel that I'm not, I'm not going against that, that uh, particular uh, directive in that uh, 
executive order when I maintain that position, that when we talk about military, when we talk about chain of command, this is really just strictly for the military. But nothing also in the Constitution or the law, I think I responded, I, I made that uh, response to one of the questions of Senator Miriam, that nothing in the Constitution or the law disallows the adoption of a similar similar arrangement or similar setup, especially when it comes to operations, because certainly, there, whether it's the AFP or the PNP, there are commanders on the ground, and therefore if something happens, uh, we know from whom accountability can be exacted. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, although that is your view, I think it's really pretty clear that this executive order uh, institutionalizes the doctrine of command responsibility within the PNP. But here, this, it's not the time to debate now. Um, I would just like to request if you could please take a look at this, the second look at this executive order and see how we can reconcile everything. Yes, Your Honor. I, I'm, I'm sure that can be reconciled. Thank you very much. That's all, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Gingona. Senator Soto, you may proceed, sir, with your interjections and questions. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just like to tie up loose ends uh, in as much as I know the committee would like to uh, terminate the agony of the committee and prepare a committee Nine. report. So uh, may I start by asking the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, in as much as the chair, uh, Senator Poe, has invited them already. I want to ask them about the the rumors and the reports and the newspaper accounts and newspaper reports about the U.S. involvement. Uh, my question is, uh, so what? Bagal, ba, uh, bawal buba yon? What? What's the big fuss about uh, the involvement of the United States? Uh, uh, may, we, may we know if there is such a policy na bawal mag-participate ng Amerika sa uh, paghuli ng international terrorist? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the Senate. Uh, sir, I would like to ask permission to read a general statement on our uh, international cooperation policy, and I will in the course of that statement, address questions regarding our cooperation with the United States. With the permission of Senator Soto, yes, you may proceed, Yusek Garcia. Thank you very much. Um, please allow me to begin by extending the sincere regrets of the Secretary of Foreign Affairs for being unable to appear this morning as he is chairing our bilateral meeting with the Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of the Slovak Republic, who is in Manila as the guest of the Philippine government. Uh, he has also instructed me to convey, on behalf of the Department of Foreign Affairs, our sincere condolences to the families of the heroes of the PNP Special Action Force. May they find comfort in the knowledge that these valiant men perished protecting the Filipino people from the scourge of terrorism. Indeed, terrorism has touched the lives of people from all parts of the world. While previously associated with conflict-afflicted areas, it has now spread globally. We in the Philippines have not been spared. The fight against terrorism as such must be a cooperative effort among all responsible nations. We are therefore engaging other nations in addressing this threat to the security of our peoples. In the United Nations, the Philippines has supported UN Security Council Resolutions 1269, 1368, and 1373, which call on all states to cooperate through bilateral and multilateral agreements and arrangements to prevent and suppress terrorist acts protect their nationals and other persons against terrorist attacks, and bring to justice the perpetrators of such acts. In ASEAN, we adopted the ASEAN Convention on Counterterrorism during the Philippine Chairmanship in 2007. In addition, counterterrorism is a major agenda item on other important regional mechanisms such as the ARF, the EAS, the ADMM, and the ADMM+. This year, the Philippines assumed the chairmanship of APEC as well as the APEC Counterterrorism Working Group. Furthermore, the Philippines has developed bilateral agreements and cooperation in transnational crime, counterterrorism, law enforcement, and mutual legal assistance 
which together enhance our framework for international counterterrorism cooperation. For example, we have agreements with New Zealand, China, and Thailand. Our PNP has an MOU with the NYPD and with the Australian Federal Police. All of this serves uh, as a framework for international cooperation to counter, prevent, and suppress terrorism and to enhance the role of our region in the global strategy on counterterrorism. May I add at this juncture that uh, counterterrorism is also a major agenda item in uh, many of our bilateral discussions, such as that will be uh, forthcoming with the President of France. We have been closely engaged with the U.S. to strengthen our domestic counterterror capabilities. In 2002, because of the presence of Islamist terrorist networks, the Philippines was declared uh, as a frontline state in the global war on terrorism. In 2003, the United States designated the Philippines as a major non-NATO ally. This designation opened the doors for increased U.S. assistance in our fight against terrorism, including eligibility for joint counterterrorism projects, as well as the purchase of excess defense articles. Within the ASEAN-U.S. framework, there is also the 2002 Joint ASEAN-U.S. Joint Declaration for Cooperation to Combat International Terrorism and the 2006 Joint Vision Statement of the ASEAN-U.S. Enhanced Partnership. All counterterrorism exercises undertaken within Philippine territory require Philippine consent and approval through the Philippine-U.S. Security Engagement Board. The SEB was established to provide a mechanism for liaison and consultation on non-traditional security concerns including terrorism, transnational crimes, maritime security and safety, natural and man-made disasters. These activities are untaken, undertaken under the ambit of the Visiting Forces Agreement or VFA and the legality of these activities have been upheld by the Supreme Court in the 2002 case of Lim versus Executive Secretary. The Philippines has been working with the U.S. in military intelligence training intelligence operations, casualty evacuation and care, and humanitarian and development assistance. These cooperative activities with their bilateral and regional partners have helped to significantly reduce, for example, the size of the Abu Sayyaf group um, in the Philippines. On the alleged American participation operations at Mama Sapano, we respectfully defer to our colleagues for operational details. However, in our own discussions with the United States authorities, we have ascertained uh, from our own uh, discussions that the plan and the execution of the operation were 100% Filipino. The aforementioned Security Engagement Board that I uh, earlier alluded to provides the framework for cooperation on non-traditional security issues, including counterterrorism. Every year, the Mutual Defense Board and the Security Engagement Board meet to agree on a set of joint activities under the legal framework of the MDT and VFA. Philippine security agencies such as the PNP and the Philippine Coast Guard have benefited from activities like training, intelligence, exchange, and so forth. The U.S. Office of Anti-Terrorism Assistance administers the Anti-Terrorism Assistance Program. The ATA program trains civilian security and law enforcement personnel from friendly governments in police procedures that deal with terrorism. The U.S. Work with the US works with the host country's government and a team from that country's U.S. mission to develop the most effective means of training for bomb detection, crime scene investigation, airport and building security, maritime protections, and VIP protection. Cooperation with the ATA also seeks to build capacities, including uh, in responding to and resolving terrorist incidents. Um, the only constitutionally restricted activity in our cooperation with the U.S. under our existing agreements is that they may not and have not, in the case of Mama Sampano either, um, uh, engage in combat operations. Uh, and may Therefore, I Therefore, uh, if it's just participation, monitoring, planning, there is nothing wrong. Sir, it is... Oh, no, uh, not planning. Operations and planning. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, that is nothing, there's nothing wrong with that, sir. It's within the ambit of our bilateral agreement. It does not violate the Constitution. Monitoring, there's nothing wrong. Uh, if that leads to exchange of information uh, mm. for intelligence purposes. Why are we keeping it? Uh, well, it sounds like we're keeping it like a secret. Uh, so why are some sectors making an issue out of it? What do you think, uh, said Garcia? Uh, sir, I'm not able to speculate. I will say, however, this is an open session. I have described what the prescribed activities can be. Uh, beyond this, uh, these are operational details, which the DFA uh, does not uh, work on. 
may I sir uh, reiterate under the SEB the traditional non security cons non security concerns uh, including transnational crimes uh, the US and the Philippines work together to enhance Philippine security force core competency for information operations and enhance AFP PNP capability and support of national counterterrorism including intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance so sir um, everything that has taken place uh, uh, within the ambit of our existing agreements sir I can only surmise that uh, any comments that are coming from elsewhere are uh, not uh, are not properly informed all right thank you um, uh, bottom line um, we have a mutual defense treaty we have uh, other agreements and uh, we are in partnership as far as the anti-terrorism or counter-terrorism is concerned right yes sir that is accurate all right thank you <coughs> thank now you, let me move on uh, madam chair to um, the DIG the ILG Secretary, the ND Secretary, the Chief of the Philippine National Police, during the last hearing, I just want to clarify this. You said uh, uh, more or less uh, the three of you were saying that you did not think that the encounter was that that, that huge or that big. Uh, you did not need to discuss it with the President uh, during the time that you were with them uh, from uh, 7 o'clock in the morning from the flight up to Sambaga until in the afternoon. Uh, the, 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 the point bugging me is that in, the, in those statements was that uh, there was an encounter. You knew there was an encounter. There was a report to you that there was an encounter. And uh, you thought it was not that big. Uh, am I right to remember that way, uh, Secretary Rojas, uh, Secretary Gasmin? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, if I may uh, clarify your characterization. No? Uh, not knowing that there was an operation that papasukin natin yung lugar na yon, then it, my understanding was it was an isolated encounter, incident, skirmish encounter. No? All right. That, that, uh, it's the same with Secretary Gasmin. Is that the same? I, I also, nonetheless, uh, as I said in the last hearing, I reconstructed my text messages. And because it involved Marwan, uh, I forwarded the information that I had received to the President at 8 o'clock. Uh, which information said that extraction was ongoing which also contributed to the sense that it was disengaging. Extraction is ongoing. So I just want to stress, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor, hindi ako naguhugas ng kamay dito, but ang point is, itong impormasyon na ito, hindi, hindi ko ma-connect sa bigger, na tatlong daan pala, mahigit, 390 ang nandun sa area na yun. Uh, dahil hindi nga kami uh, sinabihan na merong ang ganong uh, operation. Uh, Mr. Chair. Ang dating kasi sa akin, uh, Madam Chair, is that nakaka, naiintindihan ko eh, na uh, baka usual, may mga encounter na ganyan, na, na nangyayari pagka report sa inyo, yes, so, meron namang tumatalakay doon, meron namang kuma-address ng problema niyan. But my point is that there was a ceasefire. Hindi po ba? Nasa ceasefire nun eh. Supposed to be may ceasefire eh. So pag mayroong nangyaring ganyan, is that, ano, um, uh, is that common in a ceasefire? Uh, anyone from the peace panel can answer that. Or or you may uh, do so, volunteer any information, uh, Secretary Gasmin, General Spina, Secretary Ross. May ceasefire eh. So hindi common na magkaroon ng encounter, hindi po ba? Or am I wrong? Common na may encounter pa rin kahit may ceasefire na. Uh, Your Honor, the last breakdown of the ceasefire was in Albarca in 2011. So it is n very uncommon that we have direct hostility between the government and the MLF. 
Uh, excuse me, uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Uh, Senator, yes, if I may just... Uh, Ma'am, you're being very uh, narrow. No? Because, yes, between MI organized and the government, that may have been the last recorded encounter. But in that area, between BI, meaning non-participants in the ceasefire, there are... Uh, so, so please clarify that. No? Sin sinasabi lang po ninyo is since 2011, between MI organized and the government, but there are PAGs, there's BIFF in that area na nagkakaroon ng putukan in the interim. Yes, Secretary, because we do not have a ceasefire with the other groups. All right. Uh, may I ask that the Secretary had forward this exchange? between the three of us to the committee on peace and unification during the hearings of the BBL. Uh, I think this would, this would greatly help us there. All right. Let me now, uh, just for clarification also, ask the Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces about your table of organization na prinisintan nyo sa amin kanina rito. On page 4, nandun yung TO ninyo. Uh, it's a chain of command. The president, commander-in-chief, CIC. And then directly under is the chief of staff, the armed forces. Um, tapos, naka-ear, naka-ear yung SND, the Secretary of National Defense. Uh, is this the same TO sa DILG and PNP? Sir, by this, uh, this description, is the chain of command in the armed forces, as I understand it, no? Uh, the DILG and the PNP, being a civilian uh, organization, follows uh, the rules of the civilian side of government, uh, where in this instance, both Secretary Gasmin for the AFP and I for the... Uh, uh, DILG slash PNP are the alter egos uh, of the President, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Precisely, Mr. Pre uh, Madam President, they represent the President. Eh. So, bakit sila naka sa ano? They are not directly in the or in the office of the President itself. But ganun na situation. No? Again, it's a question that uh, I'm sure will aid us in our legislation because <laughs> hindi po ba? Naka-ear lang kayo eh. Kung tama, itong prinisinta sa atin, ano? And then also, on page 12, uh, General Katapang, Levels of Planning Coordination. President, Diretso na agad, GHQ, Strategic, NHQ, PNP. Uh, nothing here is SND or SILG. Ganito po ba talaga? Madam Chair, Your Honor, uh, you see the President occupies two, hat, two hats. He is the President as a civilian authority and also he is the Commander-in-Chief of all the armed forces. In this particular case, this is a military chain of command. And therefore, the Secretary of National Defense is not a military man. He is an alter ego of the President. He advises and he he can uh, give orders to us be simply because he was directed by the president. On the next chart, uh, there's uh, levels of planning uh, coordination. You'll see that, again, uh, by virtue of Section 18, Article 7, Executive Department of the Constitution, the President is the Commander-in-Chief of all the armed forces or armed services. I mean to say it includes the PNP. Although the PNP have a different setup wherein the NAPOLCOM chair is also the SILG. Uh, but the same manner, uh, we believe that the PNP is organized. Its line of uh, command is almost just like the armed forces of the Philippines. Your Honor.
Madam Chair, I don't mind. She, the Senator Villar Go ahead. wants to follow up. Senator Villar. I just want to know, I, I'm not familiar with the military. I'm a civilian all the way. But nagtataka lang po ako, eh, ba't pa tayo kumuha ng Secretary of National Defense kung didiretso ka sa Presidente? Ano ang role ng Secretary of National Defense sa atin? Ibig sabihin, uh, parang tinitingnan ko dito sa level of uh, a chain of command mo, parang walang role ang Secretary of National Defense. Wala siyang uh, uh, alam, wala siyang uh, say, ganun. So, Ay, parang hindi ko makita na walang role ang Secretary of National Defense. Uh, kaya, will you please explain to us ano ba yung role ng Secretary of National Defense between you and the President? Madam Chair, can I... I'm not... Uh, I think the Secretary is also equally aware of this role. But I, I, what I know is the Secretary of National Defense is the alter ego of the president and therefore if there are things that he needs to take up with the armed forces he can delegate these things to the secretary of national defense may role lang ang secretary of national defense pag dinelegatean siya ng president ganun ba in the established uh, under the constitution under the administrative code of 1987 the secretary of national defense has a specific function uh, in, in order to expedite and uh, ensure that the armed forces of the Philippines does perform its mission. Kasi ang impression namin, uh, siya ang head ng uh, defense. So parang hindi namin ma-imagine na everything will come from the president tapos wala siyang alam unless delegated by the president to do this. Ang impression ko is he's in charge of the whole defense of the Philippines. So, nagugulat ako na parang ang nag-uusap, ikaw at presidente, parang wala siyang role. Kaya siguro, tama ang sabi ni uh, Senator Soto and uh, that we should study this and, uh, and uh, find out if this is really the meaning of the chain of command because uh, we're not away that this is like this. Thank you very Thank much. You. Madam Chair, I, I have two more questions, but uh, I was given a sign that my time has ended. I, I don't know if I put you in five minutes already, but nevertheless, let me just make a manifestation, Madam Chair, and I will uh, uh, put forth my other questions in the next round. Let me just make this statement, because again, this is another piece of legislation that we should look into. And now, uh, let me, well, as I said, just a manifestation. Madam Chair, after 9-1-1, the United States created the Department of Homeland Security as a response. After Mama Sapano, I am reminded of a long-time proposal of two old friends of mine. I'll just call them by their nicknames, no? Danding and Ramon. Uh, I, I'm reminded by their proposal, eh? because after hearing the issues at hand, I am now more convinced that we need a unified armed forces and police command under the Department of Defense and Security. Yung DILG, pwedeng Department of Local Government. Eh. We should look into this because the present, the present command structure is divided and the result is Mama Sapano. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for that manifestation. In fact, the NICA, which is supposed to be a repository of intelligence, um, has not really been figuring prominently in the coordination in this particular incident. But uh, I may I ask for your indulgence, uh, Senator Hanasan, just to make a point clear, because this is time and again coming back to us with the question of um, foreign involvement. Because uh, Senator Soto made this clear. Uh, Yusek Garcia... Since you're present here today, Madam. I would just like to know if the DFA has actually been a price of the situation on the ground with regards to alleged or possible foreign involvement. Did they actually brief you on this? Uh, can you confirm that or, or not? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we have had uh, no such information provided to us by the security forces. Uh, we would have to get...
the DFA is not involved in uh, operations. However, we have also uh, taken the initiative. The Secretary has spoken directly with the U.S. Ambassador, and we have confirmed that there was no U.S. involvement in the operation. So that's the confirmation from the U.S. Embassy. There's no U.S. involvement. There is no U.S. involvement in the operation. The operation was, as far as we can determine, 100 percent Filipino planned and implemented. But you will do your own initiative and also interview those that were actually on the ground. Am I correct, sir? Um, uh, ma madam, we, we're foreign affairs, so we interface with uh, foreign governments. The information on the ground has to come to us from the relevant domestic agencies. Okay. In case, um, if, for example, there in the, indeed was, and, and you were just not aware of this, we have mechanisms, as mentioned, anti-terrorist groups in cooperation with other countries to prevent this from happening, not only in their country, but in our country as well. Isn't there a mechanism wherein other anti-terrorist groups actually train our police officers also? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, this includes the U.S., and uh, Australia and others. So this does not intrude on, or this does not put in jeopardy our, so our sovereignty as far as you know. Ma'am, ma these are trainings, and uh, th they do not impinge on our sovereignty at all. How about if they are providing intelligence and they actually take an active role in uh, providing us that intelligence, like, for example, guiding our military or our police officers in the process. Madam, the sharing of intelligence is an approved activity okay. under the MDB uh, SEB. Okay. That's for the record. Now we have uh, Senator Honasan. Madam, Madam Chair, with the indulgence of uh, Senator Greg okay. Honasan, uh, just pursuant to the point of Senator Soto, can we also make the, a study of the Human Security Act? Because we have an anti-terrorism council under the Anti-Security Act, and that was also a response to increased terrorist attacks post-9-11 world. So if we could also make that part of the study, Madam Chair. Noted, Senator Angara. Madam Chair. Um, Secretary, please take note. Um, Madam Chair, good afternoon. Just with the permission of Senator Hunasan, just a manifestation on that point. Uh, sir, isn't it true that not only is it legal and not only is it uh, regular for, the, for our allies, not just the U.S., to share intel, dapat magalit pa tayo pag hindi sila nag-share ng intel. Because etong intel na to, especially kay Marwan, is for our safety. If he was here and he was plotting or training and they didn't tell us, we would be in trouble or putting our people in uh, jeopardy. That's why you have sharing of intel. So as far as the U.S.-Philippines cooperation and sharing of intel, not only is it legal, dapat talagang meron sharing. Is that an accurate statement? Uh, yes, sir, Minister, Mr. Senator, that's absolutely accurate. Anything that expands our capacity uh, to know what's going on and improves our horizon uh, in terms of detecting security threats is in the national interest, and our cooperation with other countries for this purpose uh, is important. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Nassan, Madam Chair. Thank you for making that uh, manifestation, Senator Cayetano. Now we will go with Senator Nassan. Thank you, sir, for your patience. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, actually, ho, yung uh, situation ngayon is a derivative of the issues that Senator Villar, the Chair, Senator Angara, and Senator Caetano have raised, which is precisely the policy issue and the implementation issue. But uh, before I go to my questions, let me just, well, let me ask, uh, based on the statements made by uh, Secretary Garcia, and I uh, address these questions to Secretary Garcia and to Secretary Gasmin. Yes or no lang ho, no? And uh, if the answer is yes, then can you furnish the committee, please, a copy of what you have? Are we conducting a performance audit of all our multilateral and bilateral arrangements with foreign countries to find out kung Itong mga arrangement, Mutual Defense Treaty, Visiting Forces Agreement, benefit our country and the other parties. Uh, Secretary Garcia. Thank you. We, we, we do not have uh, a formal review as such, but naturally the relationship is reviewed every time we meet. And we can share information on that uh, with you, sir. Secretary Garcia, this is an ongoing review. 
Uh, uh, yes, sir. It, it, it goes on. You know, uh, uh, as we have a discussion with our foreign partner, we see what, where we want to improve, yes. and we can move forward. And of course, it's based on a very clear definition of what constitutes our national interest. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And our, our positions are prepared interagency-wise. We put together all the different concerns. That so is on the foreign policy side. Yes, sir. On the security side. By the way, foreign policy and security policy are, is a very porous policy environment, correct? Correct, sir. Okay. Hindi, hindi mo pwedeng ihiwalay. Let me go to Secretary Gasmin. Uh, pareho ho ba? We have a regular assessment conducted by our office, the uh, strategic assessment uh, office. So may, may material po tayo, which you can furnish the committee yes, with? Yes, Your Honor. Opa. Uh, now, let me go to page 12 of the briefing of Secretary of uh, General Katapang. Levels of planning coordination. Madam Chair, uh, I refer to this because the policy issue before us is how the chain of command operated and responded to the situation. Because of its exercise of our uh, oversight function and in aid of legislation, is it a problem with the law, with the implementation, or some other factors? Uh, nakalagi dito. I address this to General Espina and General Katapang alternately. Uh, these levels of planning coordination define the chain of command as we know it. Nakalagay dito, President, Commander-in-Chief, and then Chief of Staff on the AFP side, OIC PNP on the PNP side, and then West, uh, Western Mindanao Command, and then Director for Integrated Police Operations, and then on the AFP side, 6th ID, on the PNP side, Police Regional Office. General Espina, is this a matter of fact, or is this a matter of practice, a matter of habit? Uh, what is this? We accept this as a description of the chain of command as you, as OICPNP, know it. Yes, sir. It is, okay. a, uh, it is a fact, sir. General Katapa. Madam Chair, Your Honor, yes. Okay. So, pag merong wala dito at pumasok dun sa loop, hindi yan authorized, correct? Yes, sir. Pag may, nag, pag may nag text sa'yo, ah, Dindo, at wala sa loop, pag may nag text sa'yo, sabi kasi ng mga anak ko, pag, uh, Papa, pag hindi mo kilala, nag text sa'yo, ang sagot mo dyan eh, who this, please? Uh, ga, ga, ganun ba yun? Kung sir, uh, hindi kasama, di, hindi ko kasama. Oh, okay. Ibig sabihin, pag pwede kang magdagdag by, by uh, authority, of a higher level of command pero hindi ka pwedeng magbawas. Is that a fair statement? May, may ask for clarification, sir? Ibig sabihin, pag sinabi ng Pangulo, isama sa loop si ganito. Siyempre, you ask uh, on the basis of need to know uh, bakit po? Yes, sir. I'll okay. ask that. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I just want clear categorical answers. No? Adjel Katapang, is this valid? Madam Chair, Your Honor, yes. Ito rin ang basis ng distribution ng intelligence packet on a need-to-know basis. Dahil, the involvement of certain levels of command will result in a comprehensive, well-crafted plan that will cover everything. From the strategic, no, to the operational, to the tactical. I, is that correct? Madam Chair, Your Honor, yes. It is also the basis for coordination. Yes, Your Honor. So, lahat ito nang gagaling, Madam Chair, dun sa intelligence packet, sa impormasyon na sinesir para ang resulta magandang plano. Madam Chair, Your Honor, yes. At ito ay, pag hindi ito nangyari, according to what you recognize as the chain of command, you have the moral obligation and the duty to ask why. And you know why? 
General Espina and General Katapang, because lives are at stake. Lives of soldiers, policemen, civilians are at stake. Kaya kailangan maingat, precise, at maganda yung plano. Is this a fair statement? Madam Chair, Your Honor, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let me go to the basic Mang Samoro basic law and the peace process. May I ask uh, Professor Ferrer, if outside the BBL and our peace initiatives, we are driven by a comprehensive long-term national peace policy that incorporates core values that cannot be touched, especially if it involves upholding the Constitution. Ito ho ba ang, ang mindset natin na the BBL is just one step, but uh, bearing in mind that we are not only dealing with one revolutionary or liberal group, meron tayong comprehensive, written or otherwise, national peace policy that drives us. Yes, Your Honor, starting from the Constitution, which says that uh, the state um, disavows uh, war as an instrument of policy, of national policy. And, and yes, ma'am. Uh, uh -huh. uh, yes, Your Honor, um, uh, starting from the constitutional um, uh, provision, and I, I, I don't have the exact words, but it says there that the state... Um, uh, this about war as an instrument of national policy, and then in the um, in the medium term development plan of of, of government of this uh, administration, um, peace and security are a major pillar, Your Honor. Um, Mama Secretary Deles, is this written? Uh, is, yes. Is this? Uh, yes, where is it? In the medium term development plan, Your Honor. What about in the BBL? Is this part of the? Yes, yes, Your Honor. It says it is within the Constitution. It says why uh, this is ha uh, uh, why this is being pursued. It it gives all of the uh, the statements that ensures that the Bangsamoro shall be uh, within the within the integrity of the, the territorial integrity and uh, of the of the state and that um, and that uh, under the general supervision of the President, Your Honor. Plus, uh, plus all of the uh, the socio-economic um, goals under our constitution, which says that there shall be uh, uh, justice and that uh, there shall be the needs of, of, of the poor should be attended to. So, so ma'am, nakasulat ho rito na ang permanente nating kalaban, hindi yung isa't isa, kundi yung poverty, social injustice, hunger, Homelessness, ignorance, too much partisan politics. This thing. Well, in, 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 not in exactly those words, Your Honor, but yes, Your Honor. It At, is there. And it is in the medium term uh -huh. development plan that the peace uh, policy of government um, is part of the four pillars of good governance uh, to achieve, um, to achieve um, prosperity and uh, security for the entire nation. And it is clear to all parties, including the MILF. Oh, oh yes, Your Honor. And, and prospectively, to the other uh, groups that we are uh, uh, talking peace with, na pag it in, if it infringes on these core values, wala tayong pag-uusapan. Yes, Your Honor, that is uh, always very clear when our uh, panel uh, sits across any okay. party. At sinasabi din doon, I hope categorically, when it goes through fine-tuning, na they will renounce the session as an objective. Ang sinasabi ho doon, uh, and categorically, that it is going to be an autonomous region. An autonomous region? Yes, yes, Your Honor, which is, as mandated by the Constitution, part of the Philippine state. Opo. Ngayon, uh, le let me, Madam Sir, Madam Chair, uh, let, let me go to uh, just uh, this is administrative a reminder about what we requested Secretary Rojas and Secretary Gasmin uh, to uh, just a re gentle reminder, uh, Secretary Mar and Secretary Bolts. No, yun hong uh, what 
programs have we institutionalized that would cover the widows and orphans beyond this uh, eye-opening issue of our 44 heroes? Uh, beyond this, uh, because as we speak, uh, people continue to die. Uh, people continue to be injured. Property continue to be destroyed. So we, we want to go beyond that. And uh, while we're at it, itatanong din ho namin kina Professor uh, Ferrer and uh, Secretary Deles uh, what we have done about the widows and, and orphans of the civilians that were killed or uh, maimed. Do, do we have a program for that? Parang hindi ko humaano, baka rebel returnee program or, or civilian rehabilitation. Uh, Your, Your Honor, with regard the um, the immediate um, assistance to the civilians, uh, that is the it is the government of the autonomous region uh, that that has, has has taken that on uh, right from the start, Your Honor. Uh, thank you. Uh, last last two points. Uh, my my time is supposed to be up. Uh, Chairman Iqbal, do you have a, such a program in the pipeline for? Rebels who have been killed or uh, affected. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, it's in the annex for normalization. Uh, uh, last point, Madam Chair, uh, with your continued audience, uh, gentlemen, especially in the Philippine National Police and the Armed Forces. Uh, I, the recurring word we hear is hindi kami sinabihan which is very different from hindi ninyo alam o nalaman because the commander has to be informed it is impossible for personnel and logistics to move under your command without your knowledge so we have to make this very clear para when the terminal report is in we can factor this into the findings of the committee so that we can respond to this proactively to, through policy interventions. Uh, maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Hanasan. We will proceed with Senator Ejerzo with these questions. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, if you will allow me um, before I uh, ask a few um, queries. Um, it, uh, I, I've been observing, Madam Chair, that um, it's not nice no, that the AFP and PNP have been, huwag para natin silang pinagsasabong dito. And uh, if I may propose that uh, we, if we can continue this uh, in an executive session, because this is not nice. Eh? Um, but, uh, but, but before that, Madam Chair, I'd like to uh, make a manifestation. Well, um, to, the general, to General Parisima, General Espina, General Katapang, General Napeñas, General Galvez, General Pangilinan, General Guerrero, and all of those present here. Gusto ko lang sanang sabihin sa inyo na napakababa siguro no, ng moral ngayon ng uh, pareho, ng kasundalawahan natin at ng kapulisan. Nakaawa po ang kaninang kalagayan ng matropa na matapos ang mangyari sa mas mamasapa, no, ay pakiramdam po nila, ay wala silang, uh, kapag sila ay sumuong sa isang special operation sa Mindanao, ay maaring wala silang saklolo. No? Ito yung mga dapat nating um, pagtuunan ng pansin. Kung kaya't hinihining ko po sana sa inyo, na itaasada natin ang moral ng ating makapulisan, makasandulahan, sa pamamagitan ng pagsasabi ng kung ano po yung tunay na nangyayari. Itigil na po natin ang pagtuturan sa isa't isa. At uh, gusto ko pong ipaabot sa inyo na ang seri ng ating Senate hearings, mayorya ng ating makababayan, ay naniniwala na may, uh, may mga inconsistencies. No? Tulad na lang nung nakaraan, ang sabi nyo nung natanong, kung ano oras na paabot sa Pangulo, marami sa inyo nagsabi hapon na, pero lumalabas umaga pa pala. So sabihin po natin sana, Madam Chair, yung katotohanan. Uh, General Lapeñas, ramdam ko po ang bigat na inyong nararamdaman dahil napatayang kayo ng apat na put, apat na tropa at kinakailan ninyong it, itago ang uh, kabubuan ng impormasyon dahil sa, uh, sa, in, sa covert operation. Nung kayo po ay pumayag, nang uh, kahilingang ilihim ang lahat ito kay Secretary Rojas at General Espina, batid po ninyo lumabat kayo sa chain of command. Pero dahil hindi ba't dapat kaharap ninyo ang Pangulo, kumpiyansa kayo na ang paglilihim na ito ay may mas mataas na katapatan. 
Uh, Madam Chair, I just like to appeal um, again uh, sana pang matigil na natin yung turuan, no? Yung, uh, if we can, we have already gathered already enough information if we can already um, continue this in an executive session that kasi baka mamaya pati Madam Chair, yung MILF and other um, rebel groups are already laughing at us because the AFP and PNP are already blaming each other. No? So, Madam Chair, I uh, would propose that we continue on an executive session. Madam Chair. Uh, before the Chair decides on that, Madam Chair, before you decide on the matter, I just like to, I'm really bothered by these exchanges between uh, Napenas and Purisima. There is a text here, uh, General Napenas, wherein you texted General Nape uh, Purisima, where you refer to the, the uh, and let me read so we get it in context. You said, in the text on January 13, 2015 at 1.07 p.m. In consideration of the comments of the President during our meeting, a number of personnel to be deployed in the operations, recommend we follow the secondary date as the additional personnel to be used are deployed in Tacloban for the Pope's visit. Also, the primary date is too tight while we no longer have a window on the secondary date. While, while, while we have a longer window in the second right. Ano ibig sabihin ng nito? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I mentioned that already yes. before that uh -huh. the primary date should be before the visit of the Pope. Uh -huh. But then, because of the utilization of our forces to be deployed in Tacloban, because some of the forces from 1st Battalion were deployed in Tacloban, so we recommended that it should be done on the 23 to 26, Your Honor. That is the secondary date? Yes, sir, Your Honor. And in that same text, you said for your consideration and approval addressed to uh, Purisima. Yes, Your Honor. That was on January 23, 2015 at 1.07 p.m. Is that correct? That's, that's what you wrote here. Yes, Your Honor. And Purima, Purisima said, and I quote, at 1.47 p.m., quote, okay, NAP, go for the secondary schedule. Do you confirm that? Yes, Your Honor. In other words, <laughs> Purisima gave the approval that you go on the secondary date. Very clear. Yes, Your Honor. While he was under suspension. Yes, Your Honor. And in fact, he also told you not to tell Secretary Rojas and Bolt Gasmin of this operation while he was on suspension. Yes, Your Honor. That's all. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I uh, would like just to echo the exact sentiments of uh, Senator Heresito. At the first hearing, I manifested that uh, I feel bad at tingin ko nga pinagtatawanan tayo nung iba sapagkat yung internal na pagka hindi pagkaunawaan na spispine, for example, sa AFP, no one ever said na hindi tumulong ang AFP. At totoo yung sinabi kanina na mas maraming mamamatay. The, and with the indulgence of... Uh, our Chief of Staff, General Katapang, the whole issue came about sa statement nyo po na sinabi nyo, in as much as we have a peace process, we do not want to endanger these things because pag sinugod po natin ang MILF, they might think that we are at war. But all of this, and, and the same thing with the statement of General Talino, this is the transcript, Hener, baka pwede kami makahingin ng artillery support. Sabi niya, Sir, gusto ko ibigay sa inyo, pero as of now, hindi pumayag si Division Commander because of the peace process. So, ito po ang, uh, some of these have been answered, some hindi. But at this point in time, today, it is very clear that the President was told uh, early in the morning that all kinds of support, artillery and air, uh, would be provided. So, so the, the only remaining question is, um, at what level was the decision made to balance the support and the, and the peace process? Having said that, that is internal to us. Because let us all remember that if Marwan was not there, this would not happen. And if the MILF did not cuddle uh, Marwan, this would not happen. So having said that, Madam Chair, I'd just like to forewarn and uh, ask uh, the kind uh, indulgence of uh, Chairman Iqbal, uh, when it's my turn to ask questions tomorrow, maybe he can uh, coordinate with his colleagues in the Central Committee, because I'd like to ask him so that we will have a good discussion, no? Uh, first, yung statement po ni Vice Chairman Jafar na, for Political Affairs, that his statement that 
hindi pa kompleto yung investigasyon ng MILF, but uh, their initial finding is that the MILF was forced to engage the policemen at may sinasabing self-defense, which is against all the testimony that we've heard uh, in this hearing. No? Secondly, that the MILF will not surrender their men uh, regardless of the findings no? of uh, the different uh, committees, the BOI and the DOJ. No? So I, I'd like them to clarify that. And lastly, yung pong uh, gamit ng mga sinole, uh, may I quickly ask uh, General Espina, yung po bang mga cellphone, pitaka, personal belongings, sinoli na po ba? No, sir. Oh, so I, I'd just like to manifest, Madam Chair, that I'm really offended that the Peace Panel and the OPAP keep saying, this okay na, return faith na sa kanila, mag-BBL na tayo, eh, simpleng-simpleng bagay na yung mga gamit na personal. Eh, yung asawa at yung mga anak, hinihintay na lang eh, makita man lang kung anong huling text, kung ano yung litratong tinitignan. So, you know, let, let's start speaking naman for the government and let's let's have both sides. Let MILF speak for themselves, but sana naman po, someone speaks for the government din naman po. So, Madam Chair, I'll reserve that for tomorrow and thank you for your time. Thank you for your manifestation. I've noted the suggestion and request of Senator J.V. Ejercito for an executive session, which is actually in support of the request of the AFP for an executive session, a letter they sent to me this morning. I think for the best interest also of preserving um, certain sensitive issues on national security and in the spirit also of uh, being candid about the situation without worsening relationships with the PNP, we will agree to an executive session. And then tomorrow, we will continue with our hearings and begin with the last senator to uh, um, after we will begin with Senator Nancy Binay for her questions tomorrow. We, we will have an executive session first First, now. Uh, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Madam Chair, um, uh, no, no, no. Um, probably we can just finish with a few senators and then we go to the executive session. Um, if we can just uh, um, 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 try to omit you know, or uh, um, stop na lang yung tungkol sa coordination, yung mga blaming. So. No, I, I think that um, I think that there's a lot to be discussed in an executive session that if we don't start now, uh, at least by that time, uh, for the senators here who haven't asked, you will have more questions to ask also in the open hearing tomorrow because I don't want to end our investigation with an executive session. That's the reason why Mr. I would Chair, like to continue uh, tomorrow. Chair, uh, Ms. Ma'am. Uh, I'm just going to Sambuanga tomorrow. I want to okay. ask my questions. So, uh, we, will, we will give um, uh, consideration to the senators who need to ask now, uh, like uh, Senator uh, uh, Villar, who needs to do her work in Zamboanga tomorrow. So we will go ahead and, and allow her. But Senator Nancy, with your permission, ma'am. I will yield to Senator Villar. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Senator very much. Senator Rojas, I, I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, Secretary Rojas. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, the notice that we got is just for today, and we have other responsibilities. So if we can get as many of the questions as today, uh, we would appreciate it. Lang, uh, what, what do you mean? The PNP will not be able to attend tomorrow? Uh, well, no, the notice that we secretaries got is for today only. Eh? 23. So, would you be able to attend tomorrow? We, well, ma'am, if we can get as many senators, uh, um, if we can uh, get their, as many questions as we can today, maybe there's, I, I don't know what, then maybe tomorrow can be much more focused on specific. But we will try, I mean, we will change our schedules, uh, but the, the notice that we got was just for today, oh, so... Uh, yes, because the reason why we didn't uh, schedule for tomorrow, we were hoping to finish also the hearings by, for, by today. On the other hand, we received the executive session request, and the reason why we're granting this is because we've also given the PNP such accommodation. I understand, and, and this is also one reason, this is not whitewashing any issue, and this is the reason why we would like to, as much as possible, clarify all the questions but at the same time, do it expediently because we know that you have ongoing operations and you have ongoing responsibilities that you need to attend to. That is why I would like to have the executive session today so that we don't end on an executive session tomorrow or the day after. Because otherwise, I really feel 
that in a hearing like this, our utmost goal is for transparency and the truth. And it is a message we are sending the public that we sort of end it in a high note by being present all together in an open hearing so that if there are any more questions to be asked, we can do it before we actually do the conclusion. So, uh, Madam Chair, just before we uh, adjourn, I would just like to clarify something uh, that occurred in a previous hearing. In a previous hearing, I asked a direct question to General Pangilinan as to whether or not he would obey a direct or he would defy a direct order by the President. And from reading the transcript, it may look that we could interpret that he said he would defy a order coming from the Commander-in-Chief. Uh, so I, I, I don't think that uh, I was talking very fast. I was uh, at my, the limit of my time. I would like to clarify, just for uh, and put on the record, that uh, it is understood that you, cla you, you, you then amended your answer later on. Is that, uh, is that correct, uh, General Pangilinan? Hi, Your Honor, Madam Chair. Uh, ang pagkakaintindi ko po ko sa question kasi nung time na yon, you were referring that despite the knowledge that it will cause death mm -hmm. and butchering of the troops, the President will order the firing of the artillery. Kaya ang sabi ko po, I will disobey him. Kung alam niya po na it will cause the lives of his own troops, his own men, the butchering of his own men, after knowing, alam niya po eh, at ibibigay pa rin niya sa akin ang order na paputukin ang kanyon, yes, Your Honor, ididify ko po siya. Kung it will mean the death of his own troops and men. I, I would just, I, the reason I bring it up, uh, Madam Chair, is that I, re, I saw reports in the, in the media saying that uh, General Pangilinan had said that he would defy a presidential order. Uh, pareho naman ang pagkaintindi natin. And uh, I would just like to clarify that uh, we do not believe that a general officer, I do not believe that a division commander would defy an order by the president. And that, hindi, that the reason that there was that misinterpretation of his response was simply because uh, the questioning was going on very fast, very quickly. So I wanted to clarify that, that there is no one, General Pangilinan, nobody uh, in, this, in this committee or in, this, in, in the public believes or is of the opinion that you would be uh, that a general officer such as you, a division commander such as you, would defy a presidential order. I just wanted to clarify that. And uh, I uh, did not want to put you in a, uh, in a situation where uh, we are casting aspersions on your, uh, on your reputation as, uh, as an officer and a gentleman. That is all, uh, Mr. Your Ma clarification Madame. is noted. Senator Marcos, we will now go to... Do you have a quick uh, point on the same topic, ma'am? Madam Chair, on an earlier topic, there was a reference made to text messages exchange. And um, we can discuss this tomorrow in, the, but, in uh, our other For the hearing. record, Your Honor, maybe we would like to confirm if such text messages did... Uh, what text was, messages are you referring to, ma'am? That, that the mechanized brigade will not be supporting because of the peace process. Colonel Del Rosario is here, and he was referred to as the one who have sent that response. Maybe he can be allowed to speak and uh, make clarification Madam on Chair, this. If they're referring to my statement, um, Professor Ferrer, are you referring to me? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. I'm referring to the transcript. This was, a, uh, this was a testimony of General Katapang and General Talino. It was not the testimony of General Pang Pangilinan. So the, it is in the trans transcript. I did not refer to a text message. Uh, what I read a while ago, and I can read it again if you want, but then Senator Villar will ask. It's in the transcript. I can give you the page. So they will have the time to clarify that. But that's where nagsimula lahat nung, nung misunderstanding at dyan nag, nagkaroon ng aspersions kung ang presidente ba pinigilan ng militar na tulungan ang, SA, eh, ang uh, SAF 44. But having said that, it's been clarified today that the president was informed early in the morning that pati artillery dapat ibigay. So we are waiting for the executive session but walang ganun text message. It's the testimony of the two generals. Okay, we will provide you, um, uh, Professor Ferrer, with a copy of the, uh, Dr. Ferrer, with a copy of this. From I was Senator. referring to the alleged text message of uh, General uh, of Colonel Del Rosario, which was mentioned earlier by the good senator. 
So, and therefore, uh, ma'am, I didn't. Uh, for the record, uh, chair, I didn't mention any text message during this hearing today. What I read, ma'am, is the transcript of the hearings uh, of the first day, first and second day of the hearings. So noted, Senator Villar, with your questions, please. Um, thank you, Ms. Ms. Chairman. Uh, and uh, I want this to, to ask this question to General Galvez. Gusto ko lang ma-ikwento niya sa atin what, what are the communications na ginawa niya with the uh, MILF uh, counterpart by the hour. Para makita natin if there is really sincerity in the MILF for, to help us uh, na matapos yung encounter dun sa Mama Sapano. Sir, uh, Ma'am, uh, Ma Madam Chair, uh, Ma'am, I have uh, the uh, copy of the chronology of events uh, with the transcript of the text messages that uh, that we had and I can, can submit it. Yeah. Please. Can you discuss it? Uh, can you read it? Uh, General? Ma'am, at uh, 6.38, uh, uh, the government CCH first learned about the fire fight through uh, SNMS from, SMS from uh, MILF uh, CCH Chair, Rasid Lejasan. So, siya nagsabi sa iyo, hindi ikaw ang nagsabi sa kanya? Ma'am, siya po ang nagsabi sa akin, ito po ang nilalaman po ng kanya. So, nauna, naunahan ka pa niyang malaman kesa malaman mo that we are having trouble troubles with them? Yes, ma'am. Uh, two hours after the the, ano, the first encounter. So, mag, anong oras yan? Uh, 6.38 po, ma'am. Nang umaga? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you continue? Yeah. Madam Chair? Madam Chair? Can we get a copy of that today? Yeah. yeah we'll Sir, have. will you be able to provide us a copy of that? Yeah, yes, ma'am. We have submitted already the copy of this uh, as part of my report, uh, as an Annex A of my report. When did you submit it, sir? Uh, today? I believe I submitted it in the first day, sir. First, first day, ma'am. Okay. We will sure. look for that. Can you continue telling us about it? Ma'am, uh, if you will see the sincerity of uh, my counterpart, he said that Salam Bro, firefight erupted between the armed forces and the 105th at uh, Tukunalipaw, Mama Sapano. The AP troops move in without any coordination and it, this is a very difficult to control to avoid encounters between our forces when there is no coordination. This is clearly disregarding and violating the ceasefire. Now, what that... Papag... Uh, uh target, sabi nila, yung very high value target, hindi naman kailangan ng coordination. Did you tell him that? Ma'am, uh, we still need to have uh, prior coordination, ma'am. Kahit high value target? Yeah, di ba sinabi before na pag high value target, di ba? There, there is Madam Chair, just on that point with yeah. the permission. Sir, ang linaw-linaw sa joint uh, communique at saka sa implementing guidelines, unless it's a high uh, value target. So, and we clarified this in previous hearings. Na kapag ka high value target, at tinanong ko, paikot sa kwarto, everyone agreed that he was, Marwan was a high ta uh, value target, hindi kailangan ng coordination. Why is OPAP and why is the Peace Panel keep on repeating sa media and then here today saying kailangan? Uh, I think uh, the, uh, no, the exception there is uh, less than 24 hours. The, co the coordination should be there is still should be prior coordination, but less than 24 hours. Because, uh, in, hindi yun ang nakalagay doon. Ha? Very, very clear. Hindi kailangan. E de, paano kung kinakadel nga nila? Di makakatakas. Uh, but, sir, but anyway, Madam Chair, I'll, it's not my time, so I'll give it back to you. But malinaw yun sa, sa lahat ng dokumento na pinamahan nyo. Sir, sir uh, I, I should uh, give you an example. That uh, ang prior coordination, pwede sa akin lang, sir. Pwede sa akin lang yan. Hindi ko sasabihin sa counterpart. Accepted po yun, sir. Uh, kung mayroong uh, high value target na na talagang talagang uh, very ano yung uh, coordination uh, pwede po sa amin lang ng ano ng chair ng ano chair ng uh, uh, MILF and with with me so the information will not trickle down down na sa baba to in order to to maintain yung secrecy we have done that and we have ano we have uh, we have ano we have uh, implemented that uh, very ano said very very uh, effectively uh, miss uh, Mrs. Chair, we just want to clarify that it is the provision of the agreement para walang misconception sa public na except for operations against high-priority target, 
a list of which shall be provided by the GPH panel to the MILF panel. The AGCHAG shall inform the GPH and MILCCH at least 24 hours prior to the conduct of the AFP PNP operation in order to allow sufficient time for the evacuation of civilians and to avoid armed confrontation between the GPH and the MIL forces. So may exception doon. Kasi pag sinabi natin sa kanila, eh di kung sila ang nagkakadel, paaalisin na nila. Kaya may exception doon. And I think Marwan is a high value target na terrorist yan eh. So hindi mo pwedeng sabihin. Dapat wag nyo nasasabihin yan kasi nakukonfuse ang mga tao eh. O, dapat iyon ang talagang um, uh, pagkaintindi ng Senado doon. So hindi na natin dapat uulitin ang uulitin na dapat sinabi natin sa kanila. Kasi that is an, an exception to the rule. Ma'am, can I uh, clarify it with this uh, revised Joint AAP PNP Operational Guidelines for the Ad Hoc uh, Joint Action Group where it states that I think it's on a paragraph uh, 6E1 uh, uh, F except for operations against high value priority targets yeah, uh, a list of which shall be provided yeah. by the GPH panel to the MILF panel the adjunct shall inform the GPH and the MILF CCH at okay. least 24 hours prior to the conduct of AP operation <laughs> in order to allow sufficient time uh, yeah uh, General and uh, uh, Mrs. Chairman, I think uh, we understood each other that there is an exception and that this is an exception. So, hindi mo pwede sabihin na uh, bakit natin hindi sila in-inform. Diba? Let's be clear on that. This is an exception. Hanggang ngayon ba, nag-aaway pa tayo if this is an exception. <laughs> This is an exception, and that is the stand of the Senate. That is the understanding of the Senate that this is an exception. Anyway, let's continue with what transpired between you and your MILF counterpart. Yes. Um, after the the uh, the uh, first notice, again. Uh, Chairman Rashid Lajasan sent another MMS to me and uh, to to Major Sol. We have to ceasefire, bro, before it's too late. Ano kaya kung puntahan natin sa area, baka may stop kayo kasama ang IMT, bro, na may invite mo sila. Or meaning, uh, we have to ceasefire, brother, before it's too late. What if we go to the area and you and your staff, also with the IMT, you can invite them. Anong oras yan? That was uh, 6.42, madam. What happened afterwards? Afterwards, uh, we were able to to to, uh, to to confirm that there is really an engagement. So we immediately uh, organized the crisis team. We called it the Joint Ceasefire Crisis Team at 7.30 with the uh, Major Sol uh, um, contacting uh, Mr. Ho William Hovland. To, to to organize the the two uh, ceasefire teams which is uh, supposed to go to the uh, area and then uh, afterwards uh, at 9 a.m the joint ceasefire crisis team composed of representatives from the gph cch cch the joint ceasefire monitoring uh, post posted at Kitango, Dato sa, sa Saudi Ampatuan, and the IMT assembled at the IMT headquarters in Cotabato City. So, and then? And then, uh, at, uh, at uh, 11.30, the significant event, uh, wherein there is a meeting between the BIAP commanders that uh, we will help on affecting the ceasefire. So, at 11.30, the crisis team arrives at Barangay Kuloy, and the meeting with the 118 and 105 BIAP base commanders begin around 12 noon at Ustad's Gomas residence at Kuloy. Uh, can you clarify where is that residence? Is it near the encounter area or is it far? Uh, more or less, ma'am, mga uh, 5 kilometers, mga around mga 30, 30, 30 minutes to 45 minutes uh, travel. So... Uh when did you proceed to the area? 
what did you do after 12 noon? Ma'am, at, at, at uh, around uh, between 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, I was uh, able to 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 report to General Pangilinan at the Division Tactical Command Post, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And so? And then from from, the, from there, uh, we have received report that uh, uh, the group already arrived, uh, the Joint Ceasefire team are already arrived at the area at 12.55 or 1 o'clock also. Okay. And then at... Uh, Mm -hmm. okay. At 1.15, uh, the second group uh, received radio call from Ustad Tundok advising them that the other members of the crisis team can enter the encounter area to assess the situation and determine what other assistance that can be given to help uh, resolve the problem. What time is that? That is uh, 1.15 po, ma'am. And then? And then at 2, two o'clock, 2.04, while still in Awang, um, we, uh, we, you know, we, we inform... Uh, our chair that uh, there is a deteriorating situation already on the ground wherein uh, we have heard that uh, there are uh, some uh, intense fighting and uh, casualties from the, the PNP SAP. And also there are also reports that uh, uh, the, you know, the situation is somewhat deteriorating, ma'am. So? And then at uh, 3 p.m., uh, uh, General Pangilinan and myself uh, proceeded to uh, Saripagwak, the, the Brigade PCP of uh, uh, the Mechanized Brigade and the 6th Officer Brigade and also uh, the TCP of the PNP SAF. So what time did you succeed in uh, the ceasefire? Uh, Were you the one who caused the ceasefire? Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the ceasefire was uh, uh, um, uh, spearheaded by the, my counterpart Chairman Rashid Lijasan and uh, uh, Mr. W William Hobland, who uh, really ac ac actual in the, they are in the actual ground while they're still fighting. Uh, actually, ma'am, uh, they are they are they are still firing uh, during the time that uh, they, they they went to the area. So, masasabi mo hindi tayo sigurado if you were able to uh, implement the ceasefire or. Uh, nag ceasefire dahil dun sa binomba na nila nung ano tawag doon white ma'am ma ma uh, we uh, we affected the ceasefire at 4 pm 4 pm yes ma'am anyway but, but uh, we still uh, not, uh, we did not uh, know yet yung ano na mayro pa pala ma'am na 84 sack that time okay thank you uh, uh, general galvez i just uh, uh, will you please submit to us the chronology of events? Maybe we can have a copy of that. And I want to ask this question to uh, uh, maybe uh, General Pangilinan and General Katapang, or rather to uh, uh, General uh, Spina and General Purisima. Yung sinasabi nilang time and target, Parang, totoo, do you think it's applicable to Mindanao? Kasi sinabi nila na this operation is very risky, high risk operation. So, hindi pwedeng, kailangan may coordination. Baka yung time and target nyo, bagay lang dito sa Luzon, nahuhuli lang kayo ng ordinary, <laughs> ordinary uh, criminals. But in Mindanao, kasi marami akong na-interview na, Mga military, mga marines, nasa Mindanao. Talaga daw napaka-delikado niyan lugar na yan. And then parang hindi pwede yung time on, ano, tawag, time on target na yon dahil uh, without the coordination sa military, baka hindi kaya. Your Honor, Madam Chair, uh, it was what was stated in the plan and uh, we just followed what was in the plan of uh, the Philippine uh, PNP SAF. And, uh, Your Honor, when the plan was implemented, the, uh, the assault elements, the main effort, were able to reach their target and uh, were able to accomplish their mission. Oh, but when they reached their target, di ba, kulang na sila, labintatlo na lang, hindi nga nakarating lahat, kaya uh, maraming nasugatan sa kanila. And then, uh, uh, 
parang hindi nga nila na, nakuha yung iba nilang target because uh, hindi hi, hindi na nila kayang gawin, di ba? Yun ang result yes, ng operation. So, parang mahirap talaga tong uh, operation na to that uh, you should have prepared more kasi lahat na magsabi mahirap pasukin yung lugar na yan. Yes, Your Honor, the uh, planning was uh, left with the uh, PNP staff and uh, they were made to... Uh, They have different, uh, several sessions, planning sessions in uh, doing these things. Pero yung time, okay lang yung planning, but the time on time on target na sinasabi nyo, coordination sa on that day, parang hindi pwede dito sa lugar na to kasi very risky talaga yung operation. Yes, Your Honor, yun po ang nakasaad sa kanilang plano, Your Honor. So medyo may, may diprensya yung plano. Would you say na may diprensya yung plano? Uh, I cannot uh, say so, Your Honor, uh, na may diferensya because uh, we are looking at, uh, at it on uh, hindsight, Your Honor. Okay. Another question to uh, General uh, Pangilinan. Sinabi mo na hindi kayo nakatulong kasi yung, uh, yung inyong mechanized battalion di makapasok dahil basa yung inyong mga ano tawag nyo doon, yung yung inyong uh, yung tangke hindi makapasok dahil yung hindi swampy tapos maliit yung daan and then sinabi mo rin na hindi kayo maka-fire ng artillery kasi tatamaan yung mga tao walang walang ano walang tao sa harap to tell you where to fire eh kung naisip nyo na hindi pwede artillery hindi pwede tangke at paano nyo tutulungan yung mga staff kung lahat hindi pwede Ma'am, una po, sasagutin ko muna yung unang katanungan niyo tungkol po sa time on target coordination. Okay. Uh, we in the military do not have that in our doctrine, yung pong time on target coordination. Hindi Pang ko naman tinatanong sa iyo yun. Uh, uh, sa kanila ko tinatanong kasi tingin ko doon sila nagkamali kasi siguro yung time on target ginagamit nila sa Luzon pero parang hindi pwede sa Mindanao yan kasi mas dangerous. So I'm asking you now, yung pagtulong mo, Sinabi mo na hindi pwede yung tanke, hindi pwede yung artillery. Eh kung hindi pwede ang tanke at artillery, ano itutulong nyo? Ma'am, uh, Your Honors, Madam Chair, unang-una po gusto pong uh, liwanagin na kami po ay tumulong. Kami po ay nag-provide ng reinforcement. Sa katunayan po... Hindi nga effective like yung tanke, hindi nakatakbo hanggang kalye lang na matigas, hindi nakapasok. So, hindi natulungan yung mga sap ng tanke. Pe, tapos, sinasabi mo, hindi naman makabira yung artillery kasi hindi rin pwede, walang forward uh, informer, pa, something like that. Eh, kung lahat hindi pwede, ano ba ang balak nyo itulong noon? Sana naisip nyo na hindi to pwede, hindi yung pwede, ano itutulong nyo? Ma'am, kaya... Lahat hindi pwede. Oh. Um... Your Honors, uh, Madam Chair, kaya nga po, yung infantry po ang ipinasok natin. As early as 9 in the morning, nandun na po yung ating infantry na tumulong dun po sa SAP. And yun po yung ginawa ng infantry, hindi namin nadidinig yun. Basta palagi yung pinag-uusapan yung tanke at saka yung artillery. Uh, anyway po, uh, yan po ay nabanggit ko na meron po tayong pumasok na infantry kasama po ang tanke but I can uh, explain that further pagdating po sa ating executive section Thank you um, Mag-umpisa na po Madam tayo Chair, ng executive session Madam Chair, I really apologize but I don't think we should stop this hearing that meron confusion dun sa non-coordination dahil malinaw na malinaw yung exception is high priority targets pag binura mo yung exception, yung general rule, 24 hours. But anyway, the Department of Secretary ng DOJ is here. Ma'am, can you clarify us on this? No, and we're both talking about uh, the... General, what is this document? The Revised Joint AFP-PNP Operational Guidelines for Ad Hoc Joint yes, yes. Group. And let me read it again. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Except for operations against highly priori high priority targets, a list shall be provided by the GPH panel to the MILF panel. And everyone admitted here that everyone knew that Marwan was a high-priority target. The ADJAG shall inform the GPH and MILF CCH at least 24 hours prior to the conduct of operation, etc. Except na nakalagay sa harap. Ma'am? Um, 
Uh, thank you, Your Honor. If we go by the very language and the tenor of that particular provision, it would seem that the exception is what is stated, that except for high value, high value targets, the 24 hour rule will not apply. But that can also be interpreted to mean that in case of high value targets, it need not be 24 hours, but maybe less than yes. 24 or hours. Or maybe no coordination in cases where the military yes. or PNP feel e that e their operations will be endangered, ma'am. Exactly, ma sir. That's right. so, and, and I think it goes to the intent. So we need to ask yes. the framers of that particular agreement what was the real intent. Because it seems a little vague. It, it seems ambiguous because it is subjected, it can be subjected to... Anyway, ma'am, uh, uh, that's a clear answer and many of us will pursue it tomorrow, but it's very clear to me. The general rule is 24-hour notice. Kaya nga may exception. Burahin mo yung exception. Ano matitira? 24 hours. So, hindi na ilalagay exception dyan kung, kung wala kang exception. Uh, General, with, with your permission, Chair, but I'll stop there and uh, pursue it tomorrow, sir, Madam Chair. Sir, um, uh, we have got, had a study since 1997 up to 2012. Because of uh, that rule, we have 256 killed and uh, 570 people have been maimed because of no coordination. Madam uh, Chair, and, and sir, I, Mr. Chandler, General, hindi because walang coordination kaya napapatay dahil pinapatay ng MILF. No, diba? No, pumirma no. sila, pumirma sila, General, na pag high value, pagka-terrorista, pwede tayong pumasok kasi pag in-inform mo, nasasabihan sila eh. Tignan nyo po ang nakalagay sa ADJAG rules. Nakalagay dyan, i-informan yung civilian para umalis. Pag umalis sila, di pati yung terrorista umalis, can you mention to me ilan ang napatay ni Marwan? So, babanggitin mo yung hindi napapatay dahil sa lack of coordination. Eh, ilan pinatay ni Usman? Ilan ang pinatay ni Marwan? So, magko-coordinate tayo para makuha. E then, makakawala siya. Sampung operation na nga na siya nawala eh. eh kaya hindi tayo matapos-tapos sa hearing na to eh. Dahil pabalik-balik kayo dyan, nalinaw-linaw naman ng rule. I believe uh, if we will insist that there is no coordination, we will have uh, uh, masapano isident again. Madam Chair, while we cuddle terrorists, we will always have Mama Sapano until the government says that enough is enough. Okay. Um, your manifestations and opinions are noted in this matter. We will include that in our committee report as we see fit with regards to uh, the proper coordinations and also the legal implications of the non-coordination. On the other hand, for tomorrow, I would like to stress also before we before we uh, go to our uh, executive session. Let me remind uh, the following. All text messages ex exchanges of Secretary Rojas, Espina, COS Katapang, uh, Secretary Gasmin, General Guerrero, and uh, uh, regarding the Mama Sapano incident uh, is being requested by Senator Binay, if we can have that. And I know that you've already, many of our resource persons have been coming back and forth, and we thank you for being present in our hearings, just so the public will also understand. We've had three public hearings uh, so far, not counting the hours now. That's about 15 hours for the public hearing, about three days for the executive session, another 16 hours, so we're talking about 31 hours. But of course, we need, this does not include the individual work also being done by the senator, so we are doing our best and in earnest uh, as much as possible to really unearth the truth in this matter. But um, um, uh, General Galvez, if you can also submit a report of what you mentioned. Uh, this is a request by Senator Angara. So for, to, um, for tomorrow, may I ask those who will, be present, who will not be present here tomorrow, from our resource persons, who will not be able to make it? So the, the BOI. Your Honor, uh, I'm scheduled to leave for Mama Sapano tomorrow, together okay. with the members of the Board of Inquiry. Okay, but for the others seated here, um, except for you, you will be here tomorrow. And also, Governor Hataman will not be here tomorrow. Okay, what we need from the Board of Inquiry is a copy of your report when, when you are done um, getting all of your statements in. We would appreciate 
to be furnished a copy also for our committee report. So for now, we will, this meeting is... Madam, Madam Chair, a manifestation, actually a question to the Secretariat, if I may. Uh, you will recall it in the first hearing, this representation requested for the text messages emanating from the telcos. What we've received, Madam Chair, are the text messages submitted by the players or the actors themselves to the committee. Not that I do not trust uh, the sources of a text messages, but I uh, requested that the telcos be, uh, the, the text messages from the telcos be subpoenaed. And Madam Chair had reiterated that in the second hearing as well. So I was just wondering whether we are in receipt of that subpoenaed document from the telcos. Thank you. No, we are not. I think that we will be sending that request. On the other hand, I think before we even subpoena, I would like to ask for those concerned to give a written um, agreement that they will agree that their records be released by the telco because we might run into some legal implications also because remember the text messages will contain not just topics about the Mama Sapano incident but other personal text messages as well. So I think that when the telco releases this, they will have to redact certain certain uh, conversations that have no relation to this. So I apologize, Madam Senator, but it might take a little longer for us to have that. But definitely, uh, this will be included um, for our deliberations for the committee report. Ma Madam Chair, uh, just a scheduling issue. Do we know when uh, the uh, Board of inquiry, uh, inquiry of the MILF will be finished with their, uh, with their report? Uh, so that we can uh, incorporate that into whatever schedules. Director Magalong, would you be able to answer that question? No, when the, I was asking the, uh, maybe Chairman Iqbal would be. Uh, Chair, uh, Chairman more, Iqbal, I'm sorry, the, the, the MI. Uh, Your Honor, the investigation of the MI lab uh, regarding the Mama Sapano incident uh, is not yet finished. Uh, but uh, I think it's around 90% uh, finished because there are issues that would require further validation on the ground. And aside from that, uh, Your Honor, uh, we cannot release it uh, because uh, our chairman is not around. He's in Saudi Arabia on a ma minor pil pilgrimage. And we are still uh, discussing within the leadership of the MILEP uh, how to proceed with the, with the findings of the investigation. Uh, if I may ask, Chairman, uh, pero palagay ninyo, next week, the week after that, just to give, para yung uh, committee kasi, pagkatapos nito mga hearing, kailangan nasumulot ng committee report, kailangan isama yung, uh, uh, yung findings ng uh, MILF. Kaya, just to give us an idea, hindi naman kailangan na uh, specific date. Uh, I, I cannot be very specific, Your Honor, because uh, there are situations that, uh, that is beyond uh, the control of the MILF. Meaning, I'm referring to the trip of Chairman Murab to the Middle East. So I don't know when he will be coming because that would require the official good signal of the chairman. And then we still have to observe the uh, protocol of the peace process between the government and the Malik regarding that, uh, like the result of the investigation. Tinatanong ko lang, uh, Chairman, dahil uh, gusto na nating balikan yung mga hearings ng BBL at hindi natin matutuloy hanggat nakompleto ang mga report uh, mula sa PNP, mula sa AFP, at mula sa MILF, at uh, sa iba't uh, ibang ahensya pati. So I, I am just uh, inquiring. Uh, we will wait, of course, to, uh, for, your, uh, for your report. But uh, siguro mas, uh, mas ma-expedite, siguro baka mas, ma mas maaga tayo makabalik sa sa hearings ng BBL, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you. That's Madam noted, Chair. Senator Marcos. Uh, perhaps you can make a call tonight, sir, and then maybe give us an idea tomorrow. But I know it's hard to be able to determine the timeline um, exactly, but just an effort. Now, this will be the absolute last question Thank for you. now. Otherwise, we're, you know, it's useless. We're going to have to start session anyway soon. Maraming, Senator Maraming Recto. salamat, uh, Senator po, uh, Madam Chairman. Isang katanungan lang, uh, bago tayo matapos ngayon. Uh, sa ating government uh, panel sa peace process, meron ba tayong demand ngayon sa MILF na isurrender nila yung mga nasangkot sa pagpatay ng 44 SAF uh, members, lalo higit na lumabas na yung medical legal report na parabagang pinaslang ng malapitan? Uh, gusto ko lang malaman yon sa ating uh, uh, government uh, representative sa peace panel. Thank you. Um, Your Honor, 
what we have put forward is full accountability uh, with regard the surrendering of persons I guess we will need to await for DOJ to say who exactly is it that they want to be surrendered and on what charges because until that is done we do not know whom to demand for so wala kayong demand sa ngayon for specific persons for specific crimes wala ho kasi wala pa naman hong uh, na ilalabas ren ang DOJ it is uh, it is uh, it is in principle a very strong demand for full accountability your honor but with regard yung surrendering i think that will uh, based on the legal framework also that was um, put out by uh, secretary de lima that will need to have specific names and specific crimes Can I, Your Honor? Okay. From a strictly legal standpoint, yes, that is correct. There is a proper time to demand for the surrender of those involved. What we have right now are ongoing investigations, several, several bodies, several agencies, and also this, this uh, Senate is, is uh, conducting the fact-finding and also criminal investigation so that we have no coercive power at this point to demand that they surrender those involved we have to find out first exactly what happened who are involved identify them precisely and then the proper come times when the proper come time uh, proper proper time comes uh, there would be appropriate processes legal processes like the issuance of subpoena that would start that, at the preliminary yeah. investigation Madam Chair, now I know what I'm saying. The thing we're talking about is the accountability and the peace process. My question is simple. Do we demand our own money? That's what we want to know about the people. Especially the families who are dead. Will we demand the MILF to surrender their combatants? Will we demand the MILF to surrender their combatants? Especially the families who are dead. They know who they are dead. Yung malapit ang pinas lang, uh, base sa medical uh, medical legal report na rin naman. Ha? Sinabi ng ating uh, uh, chairperson kundi, ni, ni Ginandeles na full accountability. Anong ibig sabihin nung kung hindi natin ide-demand sa kanila na isuko nila sa ating pamalaan para uh, umusad din yung kaso kung sakasangali. So, sa madaling salita, Madam Chair, there is no demand at this point in time. Sir, um, Your Honor, ideally, we should do that. We, we, we demand. Mm -hmm. If we know already who exactly they are, and if the MILF also, for its part, knows exactly who they are already, as, as, as mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. their own investigation is still mm -hmm. ongoing, 90%, 90% uh, completed. So we don't know whether... From their end, they're able to identify already those, uh, those involved. So ideally, we can always demand that. In fact, I, I should say that it should really be a, a palpable uh, gesture in, in uh, confidence-building confidence gesture on their part. Mad Madam Chair, I'll just keep it uh, at that for the meantime. At uh, bukas, uh, na nakalista pa rin naman ako. Marami pa akong katanungan, uh, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat po. Nakakabahala yon Wala pa pala tayong outstanding uh, order para dun sa mga surrender non or pag-apprehend. Anyway, so for, for our executive session... Madam Chair, can I just request si Yusak Garcia to submit to the body as to what is the extent of the help of the Americans with regards to this operation? Well, apparently there's none. None. The DFA has no information on the U.S. participation in this operation, as I said. Um, specifics of operations may come from other agencies, but as far as we are concerned and our discussions with the Americans, there has been no U.S. participation. Except for the training which you acknowledge. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, an standing, ongoing thing. it's going on, etc., etc. Well, maybe you can provide what you have on the training agreements. We, we will send. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. For our executive session, um, I know you listed several names here. They can be on standby. But immediately following the suspension of this hearing, I would like uh, just the following to be present. 
inside the the executive uh, the, exe the 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 lounge. General Katapang, uh, Lieutenant General Guerrero, Major General Pangilinan, and Colonel Del Rosario, Hener Del Rosario. The le the rest, uh, if you're willing to wait. Uh, so that if we need additional resource, we can invite you in. And for the rest of you, we will expect you to be in tomorrow at, um, I think the request of most of the senators is at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. again tomorrow morning, and, and hopefully we will be able to wrap up with our questions by then. Um, yes, sir. Thank you very much, um, Madam Chair. Uh, the DFA will be here at 10, but we request that we can leave at 12 because we have uh, other priorities. Uh, if we could be asked our questions ahead, if there are any. Thank you. Okay. Um, we, will, we will do that. On the other hand, wouldn't you have another representative who may be able to stay beyond 12? Uh, we will endeavor, Madam. Madam Chair, yes. can we also invite a representative from CAAP to attend tomorrow's hearing in light of the testimony of uh, Mayor Ampatuan that apparently there was a plane flying around that area? We will... Send them a request today, an invitation, and hopefully they will have enough time to prepare for tomorrow. But yes, that's noted for the Secretariat. Please send a representative, uh, an invitation to the representative of CAP who will have knowledge on operations or the air traffic in Mindanao. So our hearing is now suspended.